Oh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is Thursday, March the 1st. March is a great time. You know why March is a great time, guys? Because it signals that we're getting ever freaking closer to the end of winter. What the hell are you talking about? We're getting hit by another bomb cyclone this weekend. Maybe you are. I'm 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 saying I'm saying up here we're gonna continue to get lucky. Yeah, we're not getting any bad weather coming. Yeah, we've like been massive flooding and shit. We have been winning the lottery. I mean, if you like if you're like you know, if you're like my better half and you enjoy snow, then you hate life right now. Because this winter has been probably the least amount of snow I've seen in at least ten years. I can't oh, think in if in ever. If what yeah, like at least it, 10 po years, possibly. <laughs> well, the problem is I don't think I can remember further back than ten years, particularly accurate in terms of what happened in winter time. But uh, yeah, definitely, it's been an, it's been crazy. Uh, I'm not complaining personally, uh, but uh, <clears throat> I just realized that the patch notes are actually going to still be topical enough today. I'm not touching them, leaving them as it stands. But yeah, we've been uh, we've been getting uh, pretty lucky indeed, gentlemen. How are we doing today, Mister uh, Mister Black? How you doing? I'm all right. Yeah. Tired, very tired tonight. Yeah, I'm all right. I'd be tired too after uh, playing solo on the Overwatch ladder, which oh. we're going to get to later. So, <laughs> Mister Panic, how are you doing? Um, equally exhausted. But Great. I am actually super intrigued by this first topic you have listed here. I'm now reading the whole thing. Ah, yes. That's yeah. what I'm focusing on if everyone's wondering. I um, actually, like you know, like I thought I'd bait you. Thing. I thought I'd bait you with that in the... in the, Not in even, the, not in even the, the second part. I'm actually just <laughs> interested in the concept as a whole. Yeah, <laughs> so... Um, yeah, so I guess we can, I guess we can just kind of... Uh, dive well, into that. If nothing, nothing crazy happened this week, gentlemen. Nothing... We Nothing hit up with a noise. Nobody. We're, we're just dropping that. We're just drop. Oh, okay. Mr. Max was black. Yeah. Hit me up with the noise of finding out somebody's trying to one up Star Citizen for batshit crazy. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> just stop. <laughs> just whoa. Back up the fun bus. How much is that star? How much is Star Citizen at right now? One hundred and seventy-two million. I thought it was at like 179. I don't know. Are they still time, raising money? Um, the, no, they're including anything. Anyone that buys anything now, like the ships and stuff, right? The stuff yeah, that they have if, available. If, if they've bought anything, you're included in the count. So they have <clears throat> all their public, all their funding is kept public as part of like the transparency thing. So they say this is how much money has been brought in. So they're at like 179 million. It's a few dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a few dollars. So uh, the reason why I bring up the Star Citizen thing is I have here in the in the in the in the podcast notes, Chronicles of Illyria crazier than Star Citizen question mark, uh, and it was kind of in regards to how I came across this in my timeline today. Actually, it was only a couple hours uh, before the cast. Uh, how I saw it pop even up. Find this. Uh, it was. Um, Somebody, I can't remember which publication ran a story on it. I saw it in my timeline on Twitter. And I clicked, and, I, and it had to do with Star Citizen as well. And I was like, all right, well, now I have to. You got me. Clickbait, successful. I'm now, here's my two cents that you get for my click. Here I come. And uh, I read into it a little bit more. So it's Chronicles of Illyria. I linked the start Kickstarter page. So if you guys want to give it a little look -see, uh, look see daisy, you can. Basically, it's a... Uh, uh, it's a fantasy, uh, RPG, MMORPG, I should clarify that, um, where, I mean, you're going to have lots of the trappings of a, of a normal MMORPG, but they're, they're attempting to do things that basically, um, this is Peter Molyneux's wet dream. Actually, just, this is what this is. Uh, when he went out on stage that time for Fable and said, your character is going to age. And whenever you are walking through the woods and, and the, the person you're traveling with is an asshole and doesn't hold the branch and lets it go and it whips you in the face and all of a sudden you're cut and you got a scar there for the next 40 years of your character's life, Fable, it's going to be amazing. When he said that, and then of course, because it was in the year like 2001, didn't deliver on any of that shit, that was fine. But now, these guys are taking it 
beyond. Far beyond. Uh, in more than, than just that kind of mechanic. So, for example... <laughs> The aging it's, itself. So Panic's probably just getting to some of it now. So No, no, I got, I'm sorry, just to interrupt. I, I'm, I'm going through some of the concept art on this page. Okay. And there's literally a creature called the conifer rat, and it's literally like a pine cone armadillo thing. Well, that, well that's a very, it that's, looks an, like apt, a that's an aptly cone. named, that's an aptly named animal then, isn't it? Right, but, sorry. uh, yeah, so, okay, so. I don't even know if I can cover all of the- I'm probably gonna miss some of this, so Panic, you're reading this more recently, so if I missed some of this and it's something you picked up on, let me know. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, we'll start with the aging thing, and the characters this way. Alright, so your character has a lifespan of roughly, I believe, 140 real days. Okay? So, uh, in that 140, in those 140 real days, every time you die in-game, it knocks two days off of that 140 days before your character kicks the virtual bucket. In that time, of course, you go through the usual MMO, RPG, you know, whatever, what have you. Now, there's a lot more, a lot more crazy to it, but I'm just going to try and only be uh, non-specific for now, just because we're talking about the, the aging. Your character eventually passes away. When your character dies, you then uh, basically become re you, you get to re become reincarnated and you take all the skills that you learned in the previous character and they get passed on in like your lineage to your next character who then lives another 140 day life and etc and etc you can take it even further than that and you can get married which actually requires a contract and can't be with an npc it has to be another person Contract is involved. Nobody knows the depth of which actually go. Well, you know what goes on there, but you can have children, and then when you die, you can actually instead of reincarnating yourself, you can choose to be your child instead of you know whatever else you you, you would have uh, you would have had there. So how does uh, and that you work? Just, if your wife wants to be the child instead of you, that's a great question. That was the first thing I thought of, and I have not a damn clue. And here's the even funnier part. Now. Here's the funnier part. Somebody is thinking out, out there right now. What happens if you're gay? What if you want to get married and you're gay? Good news, they got you covered. Then they say, but what if we want kids? They got you covered there too, but you had to find another character in the game like you would in real life to get ar artificially inseminated to have children in this game. They've, they've thought of it all. We got it all. So that's the first part of it is that every character has a set lifespan to act within. And you get to pass on skills, etc., etc., as your characters live and die uh, appropriately. But your characters legitimately age over time. They you start from like child kind of thing. You get up into the adult, you know, adulthood, and then by the end of it, you're looking like a shriveled up raisin you Yoda. Get the 140 days. From? Uh, that was on the I'm article seeing, or something that I that uh, I. I'm that seeing I 10 to 14 months. Yeah, so I don't know. So what yeah. what's here is probably more accurate than what the article okay. had, but but you get the idea. You have a, a finite amount of time in real days, and then every time you die in the game, it knocks a bit of that time away from your maximum life as that character. Taking it a step further, so uh, when, you're, when you're doing things in game, the next thing you're thinking of is like, you know, well, how far can we take this? Well, I mean, every, everyone has an, an actual role and job, so you have, uh, you have, you know, armor smiths and weapon smiths and all that stuff, but they're actually there if you're away from, from your, your keyboard and you have a shop set up and you're an armor or whatever, uh, the idea is that you can train, uh, an AI that will take your place while you're gone. Uh, everything is apparently going to be destructible. So if you want to be an asshole and you have a lot of money and you just wanted like a big ass trebuchet and you're like, you know what? I just don't like that guy's house. Fuck him. You can do that. They're going for, and you can look this up to get the full, you know, the, the full Monty here, to read it all up. Uh, they're going for the full, as close to realism, I guess, as you could go for. And in the sense that Eve has toyed with that, where they just kind of let their players do their own thing. It's like they gave them the universe and they said, all right, here's the, the rules, the box in which you sit. Uh, you can act within here, but otherwise we don't really care. Go have fun. And then corporations as long as you're not exploiting some code wise bug. Yeah, co corporations and governments crop up yeah. and all this stuff. So they're 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 going for that, but they're taking it obviously to a whole different freaking uh, level. No world map. 
no mini map. You're on your own on that shit. So you buy maps from people and they can buy, lie on yeah, what's on the map. Is there, are there going to be cartographers? I don't know. Well, no, they said there are actually. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. So somebody's going to be out the there. Cartographers can like like if someone sells you a treasure map, they could change the names of shit. It can be it can be messed around with. There you go. So um. There's a lot going on here, and they're trying to do some seriously crazy shit. Uh, and they and their original Kickstarter goal, which they met, was I believe uh, nine hundred thousand or something like that. Was their original? Just now near enough to actually develop a game of this level. That's not enough to develop a mobile game right now, nine hundred thousand dollars. So I don't, I don't know how they planned on stretching that nine, but they, um, with ten thousand seven hundred and fifty-two backers, they had one point three six million. Uh, so they're above their original goal. Mm -hmm. Where they take it from here, I have absolutely actual, no the idea. The thing that gets me though is, um. And something that's interesting, at least about this Kickstarter, is there's like a lot of in-engine footage. Like they're not just they're not messing like around concept art. There's like an no. act, so like obviously I'm not buying into this Kickstarter. Uh, which of I'll course not. In a second why? But um, they have a lot of they have a lot of stuff in here that's like actually looks animated and in the game, and it looks like they have stuff going on. So you know, kudos to these guys. Apparently, they've been posting tons of updates as well. Yeah. They've been very active with their yeah, so their updates and, and stuff. So, uh, at least it doesn't look like a money grab at yeah. the at the for the they're time. They're trying being. to make a game. These, I, I applaud. Yeah. So, from my read through of everything here, um, there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. People have tried to do something like this in the past, and I feel like they're gonna find out why this type of game has not happened hasn't yet. happened yet yep <laughs> um but they have a lot of cool stuff going on like i'm I'm digging the whole like skill-based crafting and the permanent you know destruction of the world um even the business model is interesting effectively you don't buy like from what they're saying here is you don't you you buy the game just fine and you get one spark of life they're calling it which is a pretty much character term for 10 to 14 months and then once the spark of life is done over so like your character can die a bunch of times and you'll get reincarnated but you're effectively buying for like a 10 to 14 month window in the game universe which i suspect me mean they're gonna reboot the game every year or so maybe um i, I mean well uh, if they did it every year i'm not i'm not sure i mean there has to be a period of time in which they they do some sort of reset, depending on how much freedom they want to give people right because they said finite resources in the world yeah <laughs> exactly exactly um, the catch, though, and this is the part I found interesting, which it might work. I don't know if it will, but the reason they're doing the business model that way is part of an anti-griefing system, which goes along with the whole death thing. Because every time you die, it reduces your overall lifespan of a particular character by two days in real time. So they're using that as your spark of life, you know, counts, but keep dying, you're going to keep cutting it down. So they're going to effectively saying you're... Uh, if you take risks like going and trying to kill other players too much or doing bad things, you're taking a financial toll on yourself, which they're thinking is going to stop, which I don't think it will. No. I mean, when you have the whole world, you know, set up so that you can steal and destroy and whatever, I mean, people tend to immediately go and do the craziest crap that they can come up with, right? Like, if you're going to give somebody the ability... But they're including, like, a full contract system. So, like, you don't... You can't... It'll be a lot harder to scam, but who knows? They're yeah, but if you just want to go and... You can earn ways to play in the game. If you just want to go and blow up is. somebody's little cottage they've got out in the woods, you can totally just go and blow up somebody's cottage out in the woods and, you know, unless... Unless they have protection against that, like they're hiring other players to basically play security guard or, yes. uh, or whatever, then you can, you're just kind of at the whim of everyone's like worst. I mean, think about this: it's like you mask, it's pretty much like they're saying mask like off, they're not right? Have NPC quests and stuff. You have to hire players and stuff. I don't know how well that's going to work for reliability of a player base. Like effectively, you're you're banking on the player base being available, like being always available to do things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is risky. 
Um, I mean, also, I'm, I'm not too keen on if you go offline, your character stays in the world as an AI. I am not keen on that. <laughs> All right, Jeff, is this something that if it ever, if it actually happens, unlike Star Citizen, which we all know is never actually going to be released, if this actually happens, is this something that you'd give it a rip just for the shits and giggles? Just because it sounds so crazy. Yeah, I mean, of course. <laughs> I can I'd see try Jeff Star being Citizen the guy. if Star Citizen was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. You know, I can see I'll, Jeff being the guy with the trebuchet. It's just, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be honest, this looks like ass. It just looks bad. It looks, it just looks bad. I There's feel like a, something has to suffer when you're going for so many yeah. super, no, no, me, no, like, no, in-depth no. mechanical I crap. I'm not, I'm not just talking about graphically. Okay. You know? I okay. played RuneScape for six months. All yes, right? you did. They like, RuneScape can, actually doesn't have graphics. It's just no, all in your imagination. No. Like, you know, I, I've definitely seen worse looking games for sure. Yeah. Um, I'm just seeing a few of these animations and these little snippets they have. Listen, if anybody puts their money into this, they're fucking crazy. They're, <laughs> they're absolutely crazy. This one There's a team out. of 16 <laughs> people that have, to my knowledge, I was, while you guys were talking, I was looking it up, some of these people. I haven't seen a single person with any reputable credentials in making video games. <laughs> um, the, so it, what's this like Microsoft and like Sony and shit? Are these like are these like sponsors for the game or like are no, they just like I where doubt they work it. for? I doubt it. It's probably might, probably might where they be worked, past I probably imagine. where they worked or you know they're an intern for somebody. Listen, I I even skimmed through the video. It looks like they rented an office. Somewhere in a in a vacant, shitty building. No man's and they've sky. got their little cubicle <laughs> desks, and it looks like just a bunch of amateurs making a homemade video. And listen, <laughs> yeah, how cool would it be to play a character and get lost? I mean, that's that's what that's what gamers like. Real gamers that that want to escape from life. I but know yet for me also want to live another well, you know life. What? Well, no, you know what? There's a lot of people out there that want to get away from their life and they want to live a virtual life. They want to say live, that's accurate. They want, they want to live in a fantasy. Yep. They want to, they want to be able to do what they want. They want to be able to be the, the hero or the villain or the, just the blacksmith or I whatever. You were going right? to say just the black guy. No, no, not the black guy. <laughs> and, Some and people I, I just want to be the black guy, Jeff. Some you know, people I just... get it. Listen, I, I see the appeal of it. And the thing is, <laughs> hey, you know what? Why don't we do this? Why don't we reach out to these guys and see if we can get an oh, interview no. on the oh, podcast no, no. with a... one of these guys, <laughs> right? And I can ask some serious questions. And we can get to the bottom of the, and it, and you know it'll be a great opportunity for them to get some new Kickstarter money. Oh yeah, you know, all forty five people watching right now are gonna hop hey, on that Kickstarter. It's, hey, it's gonna go on YouTube, and everyone's gonna be searching about this game, and the video is gonna get more views. <laughs> it's their opportunity to shine. All right, but something tells me that uh, they wouldn't show. They wouldn't show <laughs> because I think there are a bunch. Of of I don't want to call them frauds at all because I'm not I don't want to. I think they're you know, making a very concerted effort here. I think everything. I that, think like they're, I, 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 they're I, I, doing. Game. I think I they think have a very ambitious plan. Yeah, is is <laughs> overly is, ambitious. Well, it's I don't even you know what I think you're giving it too much credit because anybody can create an engine like this. Make a couple of snippets of like just walking around the woods like <clears> if you're in Skyrim. There's some nice like forests there's a there's some water and a house and two people holding hands looking like they're gonna get married <laughs> anybody can make that and but also anybody can go on to a video and say okay guys we've got a we we're, we're doing something that that no multi-billion dollar company could ever do but you well, know the first, what with the our first nine hundred thousand dollar budget yeah the first question i would have would be were uh, if nobody else with all the money in the world has done this so far, what what is it about your team that it's you said that you said to yourself, you know, we can we can be the ones to I, do this I, now? I believe that they believe that they can actually make this work, but I also believe that they know that if they go down the same route as Star Citizen, 
that it's accepted to take years. They can raise a shit ton of money because they're not selling a game. They're selling a dream. That that's what this is like. This is a standard. It's it's it's. I was gonna try and make the analogy of, of like Hollywood going in and pitching a script that that isn't even made yet. It's an idea. And all you're doing is pulling on the heartstrings of gamers that wish that they could have this this wet dream that you would say, you know, that that anybody can come up with this. It's it's almost like they they sat at a table and they said, "Okay, space has been done. Everyone likes Skyrim. All right, let's do this. All right, let's get something like it's like Game of Thrones meets Vikings meets Skyrim and 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 yeah, you your character dies and you get reincarnated. You know what? That sounds cool. That sounds pretty cool. And then they go, you know, let's go a step further and let's have gay marriage and and you can you can go and 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 fill up a girl and take your semen out and fill her up and she'll have a baby for you and huh. and you can get reincarnated for this or and that. And it's like, "Oh, okay." And then and then it's like somebody at the round table said, "Well, what happens if you know, this happens. So they go, oh, you know what? Yeah, sure. We'll just, we'll do we'll this. We'll add that in. And, and we'll add that in. And you know what? <laughs> it's scope creep. It's and, like and nobody after, said no ever. Nobody, it's just like, nobody yes. ever said no. And <laughs> yeah, they're just sitting yes. there and they're coming up with this, with this shit. Now, now, eventually <laughs> the earth will get destroyed by a meteor. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah. and, and you'll, you'll have to, you'll have to get on a, on a ship or you'll have to create a spaceship <laughs> and, and go and fly Star into Citizen. Star Citizen. Yes. And go in there. Yes. And meet all those people. That's, it's literally what they, what they've done. And it's, it's cool concept, but <laughs> no, it's a I'm no. Saying. It's not going to happen. I'm just it's, saying, I'm just saying it's an ambitious plan. It's, it's, not, nice it's not, not even ambitious. It's just, it's, it's, my polite it, way of saying they're going to, they're trying to I think, but I, but I think being, okay, Star Citizen was ambitious, right? It had a real, a, a real guy that had, a, that had a background and a track record, a real idea, and it, it, it makes sense on paper. And we can start to see this sort of thing. And it had the, the, the backing of, yeah. of Jesus Christ himself. But this this right here is a complete copy of Star Citizen just in another realm, and it's all bullshit. None of it is going to happen. None of it. I'm going to tell you right now what you're going to get in a year or two. You're going to get some shitty-ass alpha where you're going to walk around. You're not going to be able to destroy anything yet. Marriages and all the fun little things, there's none of that shit. You'll be able to, like, name your character. You'll be able to choose from three shades of black. And just white. <laughs> and black, you'll be able... And black, that's it. Blacker and purple? Is that going to be the it. three shades? That's the show. <laughs> and it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. And then you're going to have the guys that dumped in $10,000. And, they, and, they're, and they've, they've given all their money. And they're like... And they're going to they're gonna defend this thing. They're going to be like, oh, but they're... Oh, but did you see the new version 1.17892-76? <laughs> that shit is real, man. Yeah, they're going to fix that bug. And that's what it's going to be. It's so... It's such bullshit. Stop with the fantasy because they're selling dreams. They're not selling a product. That's it. I like will. That, I will it. say. I will say that if if I like the I like the idea. Like if you if you if you were in a meeting and you said no a few times, right to some of this shit, <laughs> you just actually had the balls to say no. It was like You're a Canadian no team. Nobody wanted to be angry at each other, so they all just said yes to everything, and you know we'll worry about it later. If I like the idea of a character having a set lifespan in an MMO and being able to just take skills on to the next, you know, character or whatever, because um, I feel like that's part of what uh, part of what done like D and D campaigns have that MMOs don't have right now. It's one of the most. It's one of like the the differentiating factors is that in in D and D, if you die, your character's fucking dead, bro. Like you, you're. <laughs> There are very finite circumstances in which you get to bring a, a character back from true death in, in uh, a, a campaign of Dungeons and Dragons. And so you that can attach a lot shit. more, yeah, you can attach a lot more, you know, uh, of yourself to these characters and emotion to them. And I think it would add a lot. It doesn't even have to necessarily be in an MMO. Like if they found a way, I mean, that's why people were excited when they heard Peter get up on stage and friggin' you know, lose his mind talking about Fable was that conceptually that's, that's one way of certainly being more uh, attached to the characters that you're playing in a game is that if you know that there's, 
uh, a way in which they die and they're not coming back. It's kind of like in Mass Effect when they with the the suicide mission, and uh, you knew that there was a chance that uh, a lot of these characters that you over the course of you know multiple games or whatever uh, had had grown to to appreciate or or you know really love or hate or whatever that they they could die on this mission and and how you had played the previous game up to this point and who you decided to make do what was going to have, uh, you know, ultimately decide, really, who was going to live and die. Uh, that adds a lot more gravity to uh, to the game than just having you follow along a story and whatever. So having that for your main character, like, that's the thing, is that in, Ma in Mass Effect, you know, if your main character dies, it's not like the game just keeps going. You gotta restart the mission, you keep doing it until the main character survives, but everyone else can die. But in this case, if you have, like, a character that does that, I think it adds a lot more to it. So, if they said no a few times, and peel back a little bit some of the, the scope that's going on I just here... Think, I just think it's foolish. I just think it's just well, over-the-top ridiculous. That, that, that's oh, it, it is, it is. That's, 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 a, that's the funny thing, though. I think I actually... I'm, I think Jeff's closer to right than anyone at this point, because it's actually pretty telling. I'm looking at this. This Kickstarter is actually long done. Yes, it's been done like, for a very long time, yeah. Yeah, so it's actually really telling that they only raised $1.3 million out of their $900,000 goal. Because one, it shows that they didn't really yeah. budget it all that well. And two, uh, gamers are a lot more skeptical now. Because Star Citizen, Star yeah. Citizen, like, <laughs> first three days, they, like, were blown away their goals and stuff. These it's guys like we've seen this have, before, right? It's yeah. like it's, it's the same new. song and dance. We know we know what's gonna Just happen. Different, different. Like I'm I'm seeing these videos and there's a guy like this shitty looking character walking up to a gate and they're like showcasing him lighting up two torches. It's like okay, so what is this game? Like, like what is the point where, of him lighting? Like what torches? is it? Is there is there a story? Is there do you do you kill monsters? Is there a leveling system? Do you have to hunt for your own food? I'm sure you do, and I'm sure you have to like. Before you eat it, you've got to like skin it, and then you gotta you gotta like boil water, and you, you but you gotta go and get water piss first every time you wake up. It's ridiculous. It's <laughs> you gotta you literally gotta like shake up some sticks together and and make fire, but the fire goes down, and if it's windy outside, you gotta get a little <laughs> tarp to put it. Like that's the type of ridiculous. Like, where's the end? Going? Where's the Dude, end? Where do we stake it it's, at the at the end? It's like this ultra. Uh, uh, descriptive story it's like it, it's like a novel idea which sounds cool on paper but in a, on a video game we don't Not need we don't need that much all you you know what would be a great selling point is hey we're creating this mmo and we love the fact that people uh spend a lot of time in our game and that you're going to actually be able to grow old and your character dies and then you get reincarnated and that character gets these attributes and and this is this is your sort of your prestiging and call of duty or or whatever i think that's a selling point i don't think you really need to go too much and then and then you just got to make an interesting story and you got to have some captivating gameplay and then when you add that that element that element of whoa that sounds really cool and also gives people a reason to grind for 3300 hours or whatever to get to that next stage and if you want to chuck in you know the marriage thing which i still think is ridiculous then okay but i mean when we're going super super deep like like Adam said, they they got in a, there's there's a round table and nobody was saying no. Everybody was just coming up. It's like they had you the brainstorm I want you guys part and then they whiteboard stopped. and I want to do it by the end of this fucking conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's what we're gonna put on our Patreon like or our, I, our Kickstarter. And we're I feel like they it. walked into the hallway and just started writing on the walls too. There's like just keep awesome we ran ideas. into space. Keep going and keep going. And, and and I'm not trying to be. Uh, you know, prejudice or anything, or I'm not trying to, you know, I'm watch. I see the video, you guys, and the, the, the people that are just running the, sh that look like they're running the show, looks like they, they had a hard time figuring out what to pick to where to work, let alone like creating this monumentally. I mean, we aren't talking about programmers, Jeff. They're not exactly, you know. I understand. I understand that. And I get that. But at the same time, when you're trying to propose something of this, magnitude and you you're you look like you just finished four bags of doritos and your office space looks wow. like shittier version than my office 
you're a not, lot you're shittier. Not, you're not selling the dream uh, you're not very selling, well. You're, yeah. it, listen, if you can't oh take care God. of your appearance and, and how professional you look, how the hell are you ever going to gonna build something like this? This isn't... So this isn't H one Z one, you know what I mean? You're, you're, this, this, there's this a, is a whole nother. There's a funny this, no. story about this actually. Um, so there's another game coming out soon called uh, Two Point Hospital. It's a remake by the people who did Theme Hospital, and I'm right. a huge fan of that game. Um, and they they just launched on social media, and they've been showing demos of the game. Um, and they tweeted out a picture saying, "Oh yeah, these are people that work in the studio," and it shows one of the guys who just dropped his mug, so he's cleaning up his mug. And I tweeted back to them. I'm like, please steam your carpets. Like, dude, like, <laughs> like I, was, I, I was half joking, but I half wasn't. Because you know how you have the chairs and then you have the chair mats that they put on top of the carpet. Yeah, so you yeah. like, don't dig the chair in. It looks like the chair mat was missing, but you could see the color of the carpet was versus the color of the carpet is now. Uh, where it used to be blue carpet and now it's green carpet. Uh, that's awful. That's like going that's into like, like that's like going into an not, older condo that you know, they haven't been putting the condo fees into actually cleaning like the hallway carpet and shit. And you go in there and you and you can see that, you know, they've they've renovated the the entryway, but then as soon as you go past that first door, to get into like a hallway right. or some shit. It they just actually you... tweeted it. They actually included the programmer in the tweet saying, "Get on it." Oh God! Steam the carpet. <laughs> like, Steam oh it. Anyway, oh. this. Anyway, that's that's enough yeah. of this chronicles of shit. Whatever the hell this is. Look, if it comes out, I, th- I, I don't. Whether it's good or bad, as long as it comes out, I'll bet I, money. I'm just. I'm just. I just need to see it. I need to see how bad <laughs> or, or or how good or whatever it turns out to be. If it ever comes out at all, uh, because it's just it's just so many ideas that so many people have had before, but there are reasons why nobody's done one of them, let alone all of them at the same time. Yep. So, Godspeed, <laughs> Godspeed to them. Godspeed. Hopefully, look, I'm pulling for you. You pull it off, you're now officially gods. You've done it. You're 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 a legend. So if you can pull they will it off, be worth all the their power billions to you. if they make it. That far. Abso- absolutely. Uh, I just wanted to toss this in because I'm a, I'm a big fan of this game and I'm excited to see this doing so well. Horizon Zero Dawn sold 7.6 million copies. That is particularly impressive to me uh, for a, a number of reasons. One, any game that sells 7.6 million copies, that's pretty damn good. Uh, two, it's an exclusive title to the PlayStation, so that reduces the market they had available to them in the first place. Uh, and three, it's in a genre with a, uh, like a, it's the action adventure genre, but it's got a female lead, uh, and it still did this well. So that's pretty, uh, pretty fucking awesome. And I think it stands to reason, uh, once again, that if you have not played Horizon Zero Dawn, go play it. Do female lead have any difference? I mean, I, I feel like in the video game genre, female leads have just always been a thing. Not really. It's very. It's pretty. Pretty uncommon for female leads in comparison I mean, to even, male leads. Even when there's character creation, and for, and everybody for, makes females. And it's for. Like and it's for obvious. Well, that's a different. If you have. A, if you're choosing the. You know, your character creator is different than a game where you don't have a choice as to what. Uh, your character looks like. It's totally, totally different beast. Obviously, you can. There are character creators where you can make a female, and then everyone wants to look at a female's ass. I know. I do. I'm not looking at the back <sighs> end of a dude for friggin'. 200 hours. I can honestly and, say I've never made a female character. Oh, 100%. Ever. All the armor, it's like all the armor, uh, because it's dudes making the game, all the armor and stuff has way more attention to detail in it. It's like the guys, like nobody gives a fuck, just, you know, whatever, here's some armor. And then because there are a bunch of dudes sitting in the in the studio, they're spending fucking 5,000 years perfecting never, all of the clothes and models for all the female woman, characters. And so they're just making their... Um, but yeah, 7.6 7. million copies. Congratulations. Uh, I, I haven't played enough, uh, Monster Hunter to be able to complete the, uh, current thing that they've got going with that, where you can get the arm, uh, Aloy's armor in Monster Hunter. I'm a little sad panda about that, but maybe I'll be able to get it some other time. Uh, this one I saw last night. I don't know if you saw it because I tagged you in the, in the, the tweet, Mr. Black, and you panic as well. Uh, 3D Realms, which is a company name that many people would recognize, I would imagine, uh, has announced an old school, and I mean old school, not, not like old school, like, oh, we're going, you know, back to 2005, but like old school, old school, 
FPS called, I love this name, Ion Maiden. Instead of Iron Maiden, Ion Maiden. Uh, and it's made in the same engine as Duke Nukem 3D. And it looks fucking dope as hell. It sounds awesome. It looks awesome. Of course, even though, just because it's made in that engine doesn't mean that it's, <coughs> that it's not going to be optimized or have like more modern, uh, you know, quality of life improvements. They're even talking about multiplayer. But uh, they have a trailer for it. It looks, it looks so kick-ass. I'm, I'm 110% going to be playing this game. It looks fantastic. Uh, and I kind of, I put it, I put this here as well, because this isn't the, the, the first that we've seen, at least in the last six months, I've, I've seen more announcements and more discussion around people that have been doing this kind of thing, where they're going back to older engines or even taking a step further. Like there's a, the, I can't remember the name of the game off the top of my head, but there was a group making a game for the Sega master system. <clears throat> Yeah, they're making old games, like this, making a comeback. Uh, yeah, and, and, and Super Nintendo, and like making them on the original cartridges and shit, like just for play, you know, to, to play on these original consoles. Uh, um, because you want to know why that's happening more? Um, it actually was easier to develop on a lot of the older systems back mm. in the day, because teams were smaller, it was easier to do art assets, you had limitations you kind of had to work with, um, so it kind of really forces you to constrain down. So for indies and people looking to make cheaper games, it's actually a really good way to do it, because... There's already like an established design principle and tech specs and everything. Yeah. So you just, you can kind of just like click in, slot into that as opposed to trying to figure out how to do a retro thing and completely modern now. So what do you guys, what do you guys think about, uh, about that, uh, that kind of trend where we're seeing, we're seeing, uh, developers a lot of it more like closer to indie side of things, obviously for the reasons panic just mentioned, but there, you know, there are other also bigger companies that are also getting behind this this trend of, of going back and making games that resemble uh i guess you could call these at this you could call duke nukem 3d retro at this point i suppose a uh, kind of retro retro style video games and modernizing them uh what do you guys what what is your guys take on that is that something that you dig do you like it because you know we're old men now and we're you know we're retro ourselves and so these are going to be because really, these are made for us. These aren't made necessarily for, you know, if they get younger kids playing this this stuff, obviously that's great. But I think they're obviously p calling back to people that would have played the games that these are, are based on. So what do you guys think about this whole thing? If it's a larger studio and they're doing this at the expense of some newer project, I'm really not for it. I'd rather they, you know, try to keep pushing the envelope forward. Um, in terms of smaller indie studios, I can get why they're doing it. You know, I can respect that. And, you know, if that's what they want to do, that's what they want to do. But I'd rather, personally, I'd rather see more games like Bastion, Transistor, and those that are kind of like, they're modern indie titles. You know, they're, they're cool. They're trying Everything to from Super Giant Games, basically, is what you just said. Well, uh, Bastion no, I, and Transistor. The, well, and... Also, like, if you want to do, um, <laughs> let's do Harebrained Schemes. They do the Shadowrun games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like I, I get you. I get you. Yeah. So, um, I like the level of polish they have. I like the style, but they're not like over the top crazy games. So what the hell is that um Ruiner from Devolver Digital? That game is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, pick a small niche aspect game and just kill it with the modern stuff that you can do with it. Now. I'm all for that as opposed to, you know, trying to do the retro E um, mm -hmm. on retro hardware. Yeah, I mean, it's not hurting anybody. Yeah, that's true. You know, and it's it says it's 20 bucks. Um, I'm not going to be buying this and, and playing this. I'll admit it does look cool. It, it, it brings back memories, which is cool. They're definitely playing a nostalgia factor. Um, you know, it could be just as simple as developers loving these type of games and it's what inspired them and they just want to make something old feel fresh which there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it definitely looks cool. It looks updated, even though it still looks where it... Because it's in the engine, be. right? So there's only so yeah. much that you can, you know, yeah. do with it, right? So, I mean, I'm, I'm for it. I, I, I think there, there's a place in the market for it. Um, it's definitely something I would play on a, on a handheld, like on a Switch or something like that. Um, I wouldn't sit here and, and play it over regular games that I would play on a normal basis. I know some people would. But um yeah, I mean 
there's only certain retro style games that really get me interested. I know Adam had a uh, showed one on a podcast there a week or two ago that looked amazing. Um, it was almost like an RPG. Oh, like, you mean Octopath like Octopath Traveler, the one that they're just yeah, the, fuck, the, that uh, looks Square so Enix. good. Yeah, yeah, so they're they're the game itself isn't necessarily aiming to be super retro, although it's it's kind of sticking to more traditional Japanese RPG stuff to a degree. But the That's graphic, what the Bravely Default the, guys are doing right. Yeah, the graphic. I uh, know. I, I don't know if it's a Bravely Default guy. It's coming out of Square Enix as a publisher, but I don't know what that means past that. Um, but yeah, no that that one's that one <clears throat> stylistically. It's got going, that feel to it, yes, right? It's got yeah. that, that. Those are the ones that I like, like you yeah. know, Braid or um, Cuphead. Mm-hmm. You know, certain uh, that are that are different. I know that this is a little bit different, but it's still kind. You just of... just means stylistically I, different from styli- what everyone else is doing. Exactly, essentially, and I, essentially, but I yeah. think that that the umbrella of people that are buying, say, this type of game, are very similar, mm-hmm. um, or that would enjoy sort of the the newer, older style indie games that that come out. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm kind of whatever about this. Doesn't get me excited, but I'm not I don't hate on it either. I think it's cool that there are people out there making these games. I think it's even cooler that there are people out there buying them and playing them and enjoying them. I'm not going to be one of those people. If I want to play a retro game, I've got I've I've, I've got the gauntlet right <laughs> behind me. I don't need to go and spend $20 on some reimagining or reimagine uh version of Duke Nukem. I can play Duke Nukem, or I can play whatever on the purest of its form right on the console. So it's whatever to me, but it's cool. Yeah, I, uh, I'm out of the three of us, I'm probably the most excited about this stuff because not necessarily because I'll play all of the games that kind of fall into this category or or whatnot. I'm pretty sure I'm going to play this game. I'm almost positive I'm going to, I'm going (laughs) to play it, but. Um. Uh, what gets me excited about it is that is that uh, while there are limit, I'm trying to, how to word this. So while there are limitations in the graphics engines and and the and the you know the physics engines and and the multiple bajillion engines that are combined to make up the games that we play today, while there are limitations, um, and <clears throat> and developers and 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 whatnot have to, uh come up with solutions to problems that arise from those limitations to accomplish their goals uh they're obviously not there are there obviously aren't as many hard walls to the limitations uh, as there were in games gone by uh, gone by right like duke nukem 3d's engine is going to be awfully constraining as to what you can necessarily come up with in comparison but, yeah but in but the amount of knowledge that that people have gained now over all this time in game development that can kind of retroactively apply to uh those kind of engines and come up with ways to push that stuff even further is really cool to me like uh, like watching that like yes i can totally tell that it's in the duke nukem 3d engine i mean i i can 100 it it'd take you 2 seconds to 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 put that together but to be able to take that and then do assets and stuff, run it at four four K, sixty frames a second, uh, and still make it look and run really really well and uh uh and, and just push everything in it. it that's really cool to me because I like I like it when developers have to do more with little, or like or less, because I think that's where creativity thrives the most is when there are active restraints where you have to come up with crazier uh, ways of getting around problems. Um, and so I'm super excited about that stuff. It's like the Sega Master System game that looked like fire. I almost bought it on their, on their Kickstarter or whatever website they used for it. I can't remember what it was, but just the, uh, the the ways in which they're pushing that, that medium was amazing. Uh, and so I, I, yeah, I get a little excited for stuff like this. I'm very happy they're doing it. I agree that, that the market is kind of similar, uh, to, you know, people who'd be interested in in um you know the cuphead thing or just stylistically different games and i think that market uh, for or people who are younger who are interested in those games <laughs> might also end up being interested in in something like this because they likely didn't actively participate in games that were that looked like this when they were younger because they didn't exist or they or, or they they didn't live when the, these games originally came out so to them this probably looks like Cuphead, where it's like, holy shit, this looks so 
different than everything else. It still runs and looks and it looks awesome and it runs really well, but it, it looks so, you know, retro, man. It's like that's that's I can I can envision people <laughs> lo- you know, looking at it like this. And then for all the older guys that would have played uh games like this back uh, in the day, you know, say say that like it's forever ago, but it's obviously not that long ago, but still <laughs> the day uh, long yeah, enough. The, the long enough. Um you know, make it, 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 it will it'll kind of get their nostalgic gears turning. So yeah, I'm ex- I'm I'm kind of excited about stuff like this becoming more popular. I hope it happens more frequently. Um uh and I think I'm also though, I think I think I've discovered this or I've been thinking about it uh, more as my game my taste for games has kind of changed as I've gotten older, you know, what I actually enjoy playing. Um, or whatever, you know, when you're streaming, you don't always get to play exactly what you want to play all the time. Almost never. Almost (laughs) never, but yeah, but you know, uh, so, but, but when you do, and then you're thinking about it, uh, you know, my, my tastes have changed and I'm, I'm getting, I'm in a, I'm in a spot now where I kind of like, not overly simple, but I like, I like concise. So I don't like games with, with too many mechanics like i don't want to have to think about so many mechanics so i'm playing a game to relax i don't necessarily want to sit because you're bad adam yeah because you're bad and, and i think that's part of the Fortnite thing for me right so PUBG, what do i have to worry about i have to worry about <clears throat> aiming faster and better than the other guy full stop and then at best uh, and like high at like higher level PUBG, it's 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 manipulation of the circle and rotating after where you knew where the plane dropped to better put yourself behind people instead of p- people going up your ass instead. That's PUBG. You've hit it. That and then, of course, fighting the fact that the game is a broken pile of shit. That's a totally different tactic uh, in- entirely. In Fortnite, it's... Uh, other than the fact that it's third person, and I'm not a big fan of third person keyboard, anyway. Adam. You gotta is, be good with the keyboard. Is, well, it's, that's, not, that's not really my problem with Fortnite. Is I just don't, I don't want... I don't want to have to switch back and forth between a mechanics of building with Lego and then going back to it being a shooter and having both of those things can, you know, happening at the same time. I don't want to have to think about that. I just want to be better at positioning and shooting than somebody. I don't want to be better at putting up partially finished walls that block bullets and building stairways to heaven to shoot down on people in the middle of a, of a competitive shooter because I think it's a superfluous mechanic. Does it differentiate from other it really uh, shooters turn doing that off. it? Yes, but I don't. It it doesn't. It, it's 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 one of those things where it, it's adding something that I that personally doesn't fit for me, and so it feels like it's it's too much extra. I want more simple stuff. I want. I, I just want to be able to uh, to be hyper specifically good at at a at a very small subset of things and I not have to go too crazy. I just with don't it. think it caters to you. Uh, you're, you're just, you're, but I'm not I, saying I this about, I mean, I'm, I'm not yeah. just picking Fortnite specifically. I mean, in general with games, like I'm yeah. not just picking on Fortnite. I'm just saying in general, I like, I, I, I like stuff now that is more focused, like hyper, hyper focused on, on, on stuff. Is, oh, well, I, I guess, I mean, some, some people, some people that are gods at Fortnite are goddamn terrible at PUBG. So if PUBG is easier, I mean, it's whatever everyone is. Well, mechanically PUBG is way easier than Fortnite. I mean, it's, sure. it's like it's like comparing StarCraft to League sure. of Legends. Sure. They they both they're both hard in in their in their own right. I mean, you know, it, it just is, but mechanically speaking, it's it's sort of the same philosophy that StarCraft players don't like that why they don't want to get good at StarCraft. It's it, ultimately, I think a, a lot of it comes down to their confidence as a mechanical player. It, they it, it's too daunting. It's not saying that they can't get there. It's just not fun thinking about it. To look down and use use W A S D one two three four five and then F one F two F three F four for different pieces of the puzzle while simultaneously still being in battle is very very tough to do, and so much so that it's almost makes it that you don't even want to play it, or you only want to do it halfway. You only want to you're not going to worry about the building aspect, or in StarCraft you're not going to worry about the hot keying aspect. Aspect. you're just going to play it and enjoy it for what it is but ultimately <clears> it's <throat> I, I think it just boils down to just mechanically being tough and i get that 
I totally do. Well, I mean, uh, but again, uh, to uh, I'm not. I don't want it to be hyper specific about Fortnite here. I'm just using it as a as a yeah, recent that's why I brought as a, up the as a recent example. example. Well. No, I mean, but like, I don't want. Okay, well, let me make it even easier for you. Is is it not in terms of mechanically being difficult? There are things that I don't. I wouldn't mind learning to be more mechanically gifted at, but I have to enjoy the systems in the first place. I have to want to learn to use those systems in the first place. I don't. I like. That there's a difference there. If I if I want to, it's still mechanically hard, absolutely, and I agree. Fortnite's more mechanically uh, difficult than than PUBG is for obvious reasons. But I have to want to learn to to do it. It's like when I tried to get into, for example, uh, 4X as a genre. Um, I love it on paper. I love concept conceptually on paper. I love the idea of 4X games like Civilization and Endless Legend and and these titles. Uh, but they're just too. They're just too much, I, they're just too much. I don't want to, to, to do that. And it's not because it's not good. It's not because uh, uh, of any other reason than when I'm playing games now, at the, where, I, where I kind of like games right now in my, in my life, is I don't want to have to juggle all those things. Uh, I just want to relax when I'm playing, when I'm playing games. So I'm a hyper-competitive person, but I, I, I want to merge that with <laughs> relaxing, which is a difficult thing to do. When you're hyper competitive and you want to relax, those two things are kind of like almost Venn diagrams. That you know the crossover point is awfully small, uh, but uh, but in in not that if way, there's, if there's multiplayer, it most certainly is not going to happen. But yeah, I mean, yeah, single, exactly. If yeah. it's a single player experience, and sure, I mean you can have <coughs> you know if you're playing for leaderboards or something, a time yeah. attack or whatever. Yeah, yeah, but uh. I don't. Yeah, when it comes to when it comes to Fortnite, it's a mixture of me just not liking the building mechanic, in in the concept of that genre, and uh, for an, uh, any number of reasons, and then and then not wanting to have to think about doing that while I'm just in in battle because I think it's I personally just think it's fucking stupid. Like watching somebody put up a wall, walking backwards and putting up more walls to stop bullets, you know, coming at them when the wall isn't even finished or running up a, a, a staircase that isn't finished building and just continue to do it, or jumping off a mountain and, like, Neo from The Matrix just fucking, like, building fucking platforms yeah, underneath cart- themselves. It's a cartoon... No, I get. No, I'm not yeah, saying that it's man. realistic. But it's I'm not saying it's realistic, but it seems it seems silly that like I would I would like it conceptually. If, yeah, of course. I would, but I, I actually, would like it if in the building mechanics. How do you feel about Fortnite, the building mechanics in general, Jeff? I think that I think they're great. I think it's what differentiates it from the other builders out there. Fortnite's a bigger juggernaut than PUBG is now. And if you go and you watch uh, somebody like Ninja play the you game, you can do some pretty cool strategy with it. It's oh no, you can do you can insanity. do oh you can do, oh people are crazy. It's insanity. With it. The guy Absolutely. hit like seventy thousand subs. Yeah, and 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 I'm like, who the fuck is this? The guy making, like, can you imagine, like, getting that wired transfer from Twitch every month of, like, 400 grand? And I'm like, okay, this guy's going to be something special. I watch a stream. The guy's something special. It's, it's, it's a beauty. It's like a work of art. You see it, and it, you, and then you go and you watch the best, uh, PUBG player. And although you can, you can appreciate, especially as a PUBG player, you can appreciate, the aim, you can appreciate the bullet drop, you can appreciate whatever, the game sense. Sure. But you just look at it mechanically and it's it's like it's like watching StarCraft at its highest level, and then you're just watching some other esport try and be awesome. <laughs> it's conceptually, yeah, it's crazy, it's out there. But the whole game is crazy and out there. I mean, you you you, you fly down with an umbrella and shit. It, it's, out of it's, a friggin' school bus a, attached to a balloon. School bus, you I know. Get, it, I, it's, I, it's, I get, I get that. We're we're extrapolating yeah. a bit. When I'm just trying to finish my point, we're just keep we just keep stretching it on and on and on. I'm just trying to get to the end of my point. We just keep blowing it up more than my point is actually trying to be. Is that for again? For me, this is just this is just my feelings here. This is just it. I know that other people ho- have different feelings. About Fortnite, and I appreciate it, and I think Fortnite is a fantastic fucking video game. I do. And it's built great, and it runs great. It's fan-fucking-tastic. It's everyone's Twitch's baby right now. Everyone's on the Fortnite hype, and I, I love it. It's great. But I don't... I, I, for me, I like... I don't hate the idea of a building mechanic being in a Battle Royale-style game. 
and, and I know the immediate comeback to me saying this, so don't fucking say it, is that would be a totally different video game, and so what the fuck, just let it be as it is, Why are you and just let the speed. Donald Trump? Because that's just the easy. Because now Donald Trump is the de facto. I'm an idiot whenever I open my mouth voice, so it's pretty easy to fucking do. Is that if the building, if the building was more, was more deliberate, and there was more, was realistic. No, not realistic. Yes, Jeff. I want them to take nails and specifically fucking tack together pallets to then build walls and then side it properly and do eaves and returns before they can finish the building. No, I mean, what I mean is if, if it wasn't so that somebody could just literally puff the fucking wall up and it, and it blocks damage immediately. If at the end of, if, because most of the building in the game that I've seen when I'm watching Ninja or I'm watching, uh, there was another guy that was duoing with Doc that I watched that wasn't Ninja, it was somebody else and, and he was pretty fucking crazy too. Um, I've watched some of the higher end guys play the game. What I've, what I've noticed is that while the building gets used to with relative frequency early on, it's mostly a mobility thing early on in the match. And then towards the end of the match, that's when the building really comes in to its own where shit gets real. You got fortresses going up in four and a half seconds. You got guys building entire fucking starship destroyers and shit with whatever fucking material they've got. Or they're getting hyper aggressive and they're building shit around another enemy and then dropping a grenade into it or some shit, whatever. There's some crazy shit that I've seen people do in Fortnite. But what what I would personally, I'm not saying that Fortnite needs to do this. What I would like personally more is that if you're going to have things where the, the primary use of it is for uh, uh, strategic uh, protect, protection and, uh, to a degree, getting to places on the map that you couldn't just necessarily get to immediately, is that I feel like more time involved before these things were, f were effective in the ways that they are currently effective in Fortnite would, would make me happier. So, a wall doesn't instantly block damage when there's literally three boards and you can see through it. But you can shoot through it very, very, very quickly. Yes, so like yeah, it, but, but yeah, but like all you do... doesn't go... No, I understand like, it doesn't go up. Like, I understand that it gets stronger and stronger the more it builds. I get I get that. But but all you do to, to mitigate that is you're just backpedaling and you keep putting up walls. It's just, it, it all until serves... You run, you're until you're eventually going to run out of materials, But, but right? unless you're on an open plane that's like Saskatchewan and you got to fucking cross 400 kilometer of, of, of whatever, generally speaking, you're, you are within reach of of cover that you don't have to build if you just backpedal for a short period of time. I mean, walls don't take up so, especially wooden walls, don't take up so much material that you that you can only build three of them before, you know, your shit is, is wrecked. So, for me, I would like to see it just be a bit more... Slowed down like PUBG. Uh, time this intensive. This is a very fast-paced, in-your-face, deal with it. Again, uh, I'm saying I don't want Fortnite... Yeah to do yeah. that. I'm just saying that it, it, with a building mechanic in this genre and and okay, let's be real. Again, I'm not saying it should take 5 minutes to build a goddamn wall. I'm not saying that you're it needs who, to be You're the one who's getting super defensive, man. Well, you're it's because you're it's, up, it's, you're giving bro. me ridiculous comebacks to this shit and you keep telling me that you keep I'm like not phrasing telling you it. Anything. You keep you're phrasing just... it like I'm trying to make Fortnite change into what I'm saying right now. What I, all I'm saying is you're how saying I'm what describing. you would personally you Yes, you, that's it. You want to your feel your feelings. Thing. That's yeah, I'm just I'm just airing it out. I don't need a I don't need a a contradictory you know, come back to literally everything where it's a a, a, a double negative to okay. me being Okay, you give with your opinion Fortnite. and I won't give you mine. How does that sound? Well, I already I'll know. Just listen, I'll just listen to your fantasy world of a half a fortnight and I won't say anything <laughs> about it. I'm just I'm, I'll, I'm just doing the podcast thing, bro. I'm just rebuttaling what you say, and you're getting fucking worked up. That's because worked everything's up, being bro. compared to PUBG and Fortnite, but I'm just saying that if, I, if this was going to happen. PUBG and Fortnite, that's all. No, I'm, ta I'm talking about the building Those are the two mechanic. juggernauts, man. Like, what else do you want me to... What, do you, what other one do you want me to... to reference it by? I just don't you want know? you to pigeonhole me into making everything PUBG, because that's not what I'm looking for. Okay. At all. What's it, panic, kill yourself. You just hold up a, a fucking thing of Szechuan sauce from McDonald's? Yeah. Are you fucking serious? Did you actually spend moments of your life to go to a McDonald's? No, to I had them deliver it to me. There you go. 
Jesus. <laughs> All right. So for me, so. just building to be more deliberate because I would rather it be more deliberate instead of it uh, instead of it just being constantly everything being instantaneous. That's it. <laughs> I'm going to piss off Adam That's one it. more time. Adam would like mm -hmm. a non-mechanical what Adam Slow wants pace. is a single player PUBG where <laughs> there's nobody else on the map where he can take 45 years to build a single wall and then look at it and say, it is done, it is good. There you go. <laughs> I uh, like things to be more deliberate because, because ultimately I feel like there's more weight to everything that happens instead of just everything being instantaneous. That's, that's all. That's all. I feel you. That's all. No, you don't. Fuck off. <laughs> I, I, I am fucking stupid. Overwatch, a week later. Hey, Jeff, you've been doing uh, a couple of days now of um, solo I'm Overwatch. Man. I'm desperate. I mean, it's a desperate time for me. How's that been? Uh, you know, Overwatch has gotten a lot better since the last time I played, like two years ago. Um. It still has its problems. Okay. For sure. It's too it's too much overtime. But uh, okay. The here's the thing here's the thing that I love about Overwatch right now. And honestly, it has nothing to do with Overwatch. Okay. What I love is that I'm a low rank. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of room to grow. And okay. it's something that I can grind. That's it. That's you just want to grind. That's it. I need purpose. I need purpose. This dog needs work. And, and if if if, if, this, is it. if this dog does not have work, I just kind of mope around and I'm miserable, and and just time goes off my life. <laughs> so instead, you play Overwatch and you mope around, and you're miserable instead. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. I play Overwatch for the sake of the grind, for the sake of uh -huh. potential to get really good. Why not pick up um, Dragon Ball Fighter Z? You know. Because there's just there's no there's no community there there's no there's no join nothing, the right? FGC I, man oh, fuck that shit you know there's barely even any community for Overwatch you know the 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 the, the most premier esport there is the viewership for Overwatch really sucks ass in comparison to outside of the events yeah outside of the events I mean it's the events. And Overwatch then, is the Wizard of Oz of video game esports. It's all this pomp and circumstance. And you pull back the curtain, and it's one old dude behind there with a microphone, being like, uh, yeah. uh, uh, "Hey, really is. hey, it really is." <laughs> so you know, it's hey guys, fun. You know, Jeff I'm having here you know, with the Overwatch development team. I'm having a good update. time. I, I'm having I'm having as good of a time as one can have with Overwatch, especially playing a lot of solo queue, mm. ninety nine percent solo queue. Um. You know, it's it is what it is. It's a competitive game. It's what I'm playing right now, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a good old college try this season. See how see how high I can make it. That's pretty much. You guys it. see the new hero announcement? I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I awesome. did. Yeah, you no, know, she looks yeah. she she looks good. Uh, Jeff's gonna it. hate his life when she comes <laughs> out because she's going to absolutely dumpster tracer that's like i feel like half of her existence is for tracer players oh it's gonna change the meta when she comes out because um if she's gonna make symmetra and torbjorn even more relevant because if you yeah. stack all three of those together you're gonna have a i, I think someone was doing the math you can have a 500 hp mercy mm -hmm. oh it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be very crazy to you know to, to see so higher confused. level players Player. on how to pronounce her name because Brigitte. Jeff Kaplan, well no that's the thing um Jeff Kaplan pronounces it uh Brigitte or Brigitte sorry it's not a soft yeah. G it's a hard G Brigitte. but Reinhardt and Mercy when they use the voice lines they say Brigitte ah uh, so they've they're, they're pronouncing it the French way but in reality it's they say it it, both and like I don't know which one it is in the lore so apparently the lore is Reinhardt named her which is why it's it's the the spelling pronunciation that it is um so i don't know how that plays out but i think it's supposed to be a hard g like in in her in her origin video and she pronounces it she uses a, a hard g if i don't if i'm remembering correctly so brigitte i'm calling her battle baguette that's what i'm calling her battle baguette that yep. works 
That's what I'm calling her. Uh, she's basically Leona from League of Legends with a uh, very similar play style. And Paladins kid. has actually been throwing shade saying Overwatch ripped off one of their designs. Paladins is irrelevant in trying to actually get some shine Paladins right now. Paladins can eat some asshole. <laughs> I was just I mean, like, no, really, guys? Paladins. Paladins is like, Pally, really? You're going to come after, like, the, the, Didn't everything? Didn't copy the entire Overwatch game? <laughs> yeah. Basically. I'm like, I'm like, it's a little, it's a little bit, um, weird to kind of come and say, oh, yeah, we copied one of your heroes. Yeah, cool. Like, Who gives a shit? Deal with it. Oh, it's brutal. But yeah, so so she yeah, she looks like she would be fun. It'll definitely change the game quite a bit, at least until people figure her out both offensively and defensively when you're dealing with her on either side of the board. Um and uh you know, maybe uh, yeah, I I I want to see how uh if she's going to be underpowered or overpowered on release cuz uh oh, I, I feel like I know what's about to happen right now. I can hear footsteps. All three of us didn't pronounce it right, so the the, the resident Europeans gonna come here and pronounce who is it right. Also being called a okay, all the what's time. It, what's it gonna be? What is it? Brigitte. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for You're basically. Welcome. Okay. Great. Wait, so we didn't say it, we didn't say it with an accent. Brigitte. We didn't say it with a with an accent and without the uh at the end. So we we Brigitte. we hybrided it a bit. Battle baguette. That's what I'm calling her. But yeah, so yeah, you yeah, I watched I watched your struggle. It's very real. Uh, I pl I played through all of my placements yesterday. I played eight ish hours straight of Overwatch so yesterday, and by the end of the day, I was ready to uninstall the game. Mm -hmm. Um, playing playing solo in that game is ass, absolute unequivocal asshole, smashed asshole. Uh, the just, it, I, I can't even put it into words. I mean, I, I actually deleted the VOD because I was so angry all day. I was like, nobody needs to see this. It's just, I, it just, I deleted the entire VOD because I was so <laughs> angry the whole day. Oh, yeah, dude. I've had those days, man. Uh, dude, I, I just lost deleted the it. last seven of my placement matches. <laughs> oh my seven. God. Yeah. Solo queuing to death. I lost, I lost four or five straight. And then after I finished my placements... I lost every single game for the rest of the day. Woo! Every What's your SR end at? So uh. I had 2580, 2540 um, when I ended the last, the last ranked season that I did, okay? So I'm not awful, especially since I don't play Overwatch that much. That's platinum. It's not, not, you know, incredible, but it's not bad. And then I finished my placements, which I knew it was going to be rough because we lost... I think seven out of the ten or six out of the ten. Uh, regardless of how well I played. I actually went autopilot for a while because I decided that it didn't matter how well I played because everyone else was just so shit that if we were going to win, we were going to win. If we were going to lose, we were going to lose. So I just kind of just autopiloted a few games. <coughs> I ended up with 2180. So it dropped me just a flat 800 or not 800, 400-ish SR um, off the rip, which was a little rough. It was a hard pill to swallow. And then, uh, when I played and lost every other match for the rest of the night, the last game I lost, I lost 60 SR in a single <laughs> match. And it took me down, I'm like 1900 and some now. And I, I, I told myself one of two things when I shut that stream down. I'm either going to uninstall this game and never play it again, uh, or I'm never going to play solo in this game, ever. I will play duo minimum. Full teams are, are questionable unless your whole team Duo works really well works together. Well. Duo yeah, and, and roles. two Duo or three. Fill some of the roles it Yeah, works. two or three. If you can get a, gar a guaranteed healer and tank, then you can, you can do some stuff. But the problem I was finding myself in was that um, I play healer, healers and tanks in the majority. And we'd get into these situations where I would be the only tank and nobody else would go healer. And so while I can totally play healer, if my choices are we don't have a tank, we have no front line, or we have no healer. <laughs> and so, like, I'd get in these situations where I had to, like, pick my... It was like, pick your poison. What do you want to do? What do you want to have? Do you want everyone to, like... Do you want to be, like, the most god-tier healer of all time and heal through having no tank, or try and be a tank and have nobody die? But everyone, of course, at Silver, Gold, and Platinum just runs off into their own little fucking Never Never Land... And doesn't actually work together or stay as, as a group more than once in a match. Because as soon as it doesn't work once, <clears throat> everybody tends to, this is how my experience, everybody would group up once, doesn't go all that hot. Somebody gets salty. 
they go off and start doing their own shit for the rest of the game. <laughs> and, then, and then another person's like, well, fuck it. If Soldier's gonna run off and do their own thing, I'm gonna run off and do my old thing. And then you've got Junkrat running out in front trying to be a fucking 1v5 god. And then it just devolves and gets worse and worse and worse. Uh, I will say, full disclosure, Jeff, Jeff's experience has been different than mine because Jeff has been brave enough to go into voice chat. I was not brave enough to go into voice chat for a couple reasons. One, I knew I was going to get banned because I would have literally ripped the head off of every single motherfucker I played with. Doesn't sound very good. Eight hours. No, I would have. Yesterday was a bad day. I would have got banned immediately, probably off of Twitch and off of Overwatch simultaneously. So I just decided to keep my mouth shut and just go with the flow. Uh, but after watching Jeff uh, try and corral some people in, in Silver League, I thought to myself, you know, maybe I didn't miss Keep out on so much Keep anyway. <laughs> dude, I've told so many people to eat a fat dick. <laughs> I've called, dude, I have like, I, there's like, the, uh, anyway, don't even get me going. The, the, I, I'm, I'm a sucker for punishment, man. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a little I don't know why I do it. I'm just... I like to just grind and work my way up, and a lot of it comes from the StarCraft mentality of just do it yourself, grind it out, get good, get and start carrying. And I had a really good day today. I mean, it's I went up like 280 points, so you know, congratulations grind again tomorrow. We'll go back up. Listen, it's only a matter of time before I grind and get up. The the the, the issue that I have with with dueling and getting a bunch because there's tons of people that always want to play. They're like, oh man, duel up, duel up. The moment that I fucking start dueling up and triple queuing up, people then start to say, you got here because you got carried. And I oh, can't fucking stand it. I mm. can't fucking stand it. And it's ridiculous. And it's the main reason why I rarely, I mean, I don't go with anybody on the stream. Sometimes there'll be somebody that's a good, solid team on the group. And I'll be like, you guys want to re -queue? Like, yeah, let's re -queue. And then you sit through it, and then usually when it's six random people, the guy's got to go, like, next game, or one of them's got to go, and it just fucks the whole team up. So for me, I'm just like, you know what? I'd rather I, I'd rather suffer and get there and say, hey, I am a, you know, platinum, or I am a diamond, and I got there. Or I could just go and grab somebody from the chat that's already high level, bring them in, have a much easier time, even though I fully believe I'm not fucking silver. Like, there's just no way in fuck I belong in silver, and that's why I'm going to get out of there real soon. But then I'm going to have some some fucking twats be like, oh, you know, you know, this, your, your fucking, your tank is the one who's, who's carried you. Doesn't matter how good you play, doesn't matter whatever that's I get, that's I get just that. the dilemma and I, i'm just too that. competitive for it like it's like why why am i gonna grind eight hours a day six eight ten hours in a day all the time to to have some low-hanging fruit over my head and have them go oh you know you got there because of this person or this person or that person or do up with this person it's just it's well, the thing it's, the thing about overwatch that that uh you know, and it happens to a degree in, in, in any of the team team based esports, but I mean I think Blizzard even addressed this in terms of how they they deal with your SR points distribution to begin with, is that you have your own personal MMR uh and then and then at some point it changes over. So i I think it's I think it's once you hit diamond, the your own personal score doesn't matter anymore. Uh and so the game becomes how do you play as a team? So you can solo grind your tits off, and then there comes a point where you have to play well as a team if you're going to win. Like there's there, and, and the, obviously, like in, in most games, the higher up the ladder you go, the harder it is, to, the harder it is to solo carry uh, a shit team because you get to a point where, mechanically speaking, people in diamond might be as good as people in masters, but as a team player, they're terrible. Right. So, but on a mechanical level, it's like I was talking with Major today, who's, who's GM in Overwatch. And he said, I played platinum guys who would, who would kick my ass. But the problem is they're terrible as a team. So they, they get stuck in platinum for the rest of their life because they can't play uh, as a team. But on a mechanical level, they're beating me and I'm in Grandmaster. And, and Major plays almost exclusively by himself uh, in Overwatch. So, yeah, there. I I get why you don't do it, and I know that's always been the reason why you've never played duo, triple, whatever setups these games have. 
Um, I'm not there to have fun. I'm there to grind. Like yeah. that's just my. I'm breed. there for I'm like, there for a com a combination of things. This is how I look. This is how I look at it. Right. Like I can I can I can play and grind by my by myself and and you know hate myself the entire day and want to kill myself uh, and everyone around me uh, both online and off for 24 hours following. Uh, I can do that and I'll I will I will progress as a player on my own. Obviously, you just play as long as you're making an active decision to try and improve yourself every time you you press the go button in that game. You know you're going to eventually get better at whatever you're playing. Um, but that's only that's only like half the battle. When I play with when I I find like if I play with one or two, even just one other person, you like a duo situation. You still have four other randoms or or whatever on your on your team. The nice thing about playing with a team is that. Uh, you tend you tend to you tend to get in my opinion I tend to anyway get better faster when I'm playing with other people because I learn I learn the game faster because I'm playing it as it's meant to be played I'm playing it with people that I'm working more directly with consistently and not just You're randomly doing the team operation one off of it. yeah it's a it's a it's I'm playing the game as it's meant to be played now how it's balanced and et cetera et cetera so it, it's like it's like if you're if you're playing in in like a traditional sports team or something, and you're a really good player, but you're on a team with people who uh, only, you know, they're only so good, uh, and they and they're not all that great, and you kind of get dragged down. Yeah, you're a god, you're LeBron James, but the rest of your team is a bunch of bag of hammers. You know, you can only you can only give them pep talks and teach them in practice, just you know, so far. Uh, but you're not playing at your pinnacle because you're not playing with people, uh, you know that that you're that you play well with and who are also good. Then you put LeBron James on or 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 some other star, you not know, the coordination. You can't and win. and the coordination gets better. It's like it's like it's like Jordan when he first entered the league was pretty good and he got better and better and better. Then he got into the Bulls and they put together Jordan, Pippen, and Robin, or Ro Robin, Ro Rodman, and those three guys. Well, also. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And those those guys worked together like a fucking well-oiled machine, and they were all individually really fucking good, and all of them realized their absolute potential together. And that's, for me, when I'm playing uh, team-based games like that, um, I, feel, I feel like I enjoy myself more because I, uh, I'm... Uh, I get that that dynamic that you don't get when you're playing by yourself. You might get shades of it when you're trying to play team psychologist... And, and, you know, the, the, the father that the player never had growing up trying to tell him that he's doing well so that he doesn't rage quit and go play fucking Widowmaker and sit in the back and try and shoot people across the map. Like, that, that shit just sucks the soul out of my body. I just want to go in. Sucks the soul out of all of us, <laughs> I just want to go and play the game and be with people who I play well with, and then, and then I get better faster, and they get better faster, and, and so I get why you don't do it, because that, that'll nag you in the back of the head that some fuckboy will come into it chat. Just ruin, it just ruins it and for just me, because I know, I know how good I am. It's fucking a and game. Then, and then, and, and then when, and then people, and then people come in right now, they're like, they're like, oh, you're silver, and they're like, well, you obviously belong there, and, and I'm, and I'm, and, and in my, like, it hurts, yeah. because I'm calling, I'm going, are you watching my stream, Ben? Because I'm f <laughs> like, mechanically, I'm raping. Like, I, there, there isn't even, it's, 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 I'm using the hard R. I don't care <laughs> what kind of terms of service there is. Laping. I'm raping these motherfuckers. Like, they are taking it. And I'm, I'm, I've got AFKers and I've got fucking 12 year olds, legit 12. I'm like, dude, are you 12? I'm like, yay. Yes. How did you know? I'm like, cause you're fucking, you sound like Mickey Mouse. Like, you, cause you, cause you sound like Mickey Mouse. Like, oh, okay. And, and just, and, and I just want to lose my mind. You don't think that I, that I, if, if I grab two competent people in my stream that'll sit there and grind with me all day that I wouldn't go up like 400, 500 points a day. Do you not believe that? Like, but then when I do it, they're going to go, Oh, but you, you got carried, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> There's just no winning, so I just rather grind, right? It's like the motherfuckers that told me I'd never make grandmasters in StarCraft, dude. There are still people out there, to this day, that are like, you didn't get the StarCraft, you had you you you, you had wins you given to you, you, or, you or, or 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 you just cheesed your way, yeah, or or yeah. or you just all injured, dude. They can't accept it. They can't <laughs> accept it. 
you know, three-time GM can't accept it, not a once. And the, the, that's it. That they just le- they just latch onto it. And I and 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 so it was it was oh you'll never make grandmasters because you don't macro. And it's like motherfucker, I'm gonna do it. So you know what I did for years? I did the same <laughs> shit over and over until and over. it happened. I was getting sniped. I was getting hacked on. I had people just knowing me, just could see the barcode and the and the <laughs> and the banner. They knew exactly who I was. They knew exactly what I was going to do, but I got so fucking mechanically good and sound and precise that they couldn't do shit about it until the point where I finally got there. And that's that, my friends, is what I'm what I want to feel with Overwatch. I want to feel it when I get there, when I get into the gold, when I get into the platinum, when I get into the diamond. And I'm going to see you motherfuckers that said, oh, you shouldn't play soldier. You shouldn't play this. Eat my fat, long, black cock. Because I got there, and I hate my life the whole way through it. Like a motherfucker. I lost years off my life getting there. I raged beyond you wouldn't even know. But just to say I've done it. And that's just the type of gamer I am. I'm just hard-headed like that. It's so weird to me, too, when, when people are like that. Because because they can watch you and what you're doing in a match. And it's obvious, in a, even in a team-based game, when you're playing poorly and when you're not playing poorly. Um, and, so, and so, especially because you tend to play different roles. I mean, it'd be one thing if, if, if you and your duo were both playing... Uh, the same role, like you're both mm. damage dealers, and one and your partner's just flat out fucking you up in points and everything else. And even then, there's so so many variables involved to be able to tell what ends up being a good game for you and what's not a good game for you. But but to be, like going in and being like, all right, I'll I'll be the tank, you be the healer, and then we'll just hope that the other guys don't suck balls. Exactly. Like how it you sucks. could ever, how you could, how you could ever pigeonhole somebody into <laughs> you got carried there is like, how do you even get but to that But it's the psyche. Point? It's the psychological. It's uh, crazy. Thing. It's they just had the a preconceived mentality of what they wanted to, what they wanted the reality to be. So they will do whatever it takes to make that. You want to know what the set? You want to? Okay, here it is. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I've debunked this. I've yeah, debunked yeah. this. All right. Ghost hunters this, debunked. Th- this is this is this is why. <laughs> this is why people think that way okay because the vast majority of people that play Mm -hmm. got no fucking friends and what they do and dude this is this is no this is this is the reality the vast majority of people got no fucking friends that they can play this game in duo and triple queue up with oh so they're salty that that other people have friends so (laughs) as as they are as they are on their grind and they're stuck in elo hell solo queuing Okay. They want you to also go through that same process. They have gone through. And if you are a streamer and you've got two good people or three good people or a team of good people, they automatically think that you're at an advantage, which technically you You are, are for sure. Absolutely. And it plays a huge, huge difference. I mean, it is night and day. Even having one competent friend. Even for just morale boosting, just to talk to each other and call other people fuck boys together will just, like, give you an extra 20% win rate. But the thing is, is they didn't have that luxury. So the moment that you do anything that is out of the norm of what everyday people do, you are getting carried or you help, you had help. And especially for the individuals that made it to Grandmasters or Masters by themselves through the grind, through the struggle, and then to see you get carried or you have one bad game or two bad games and you get carried by one of your teammates, you're automatically carried to where you were. Even though it may or may not be true and some people do get carried, but the reality of it is, is... That's just the mentality of most MOBA gamers. It's not just Overwatch. It's in all of them. They're all so, like that. And this is really weird because what what you tend to see is, um, you know, let's say you're looking at uh, at streamers. Well, obviously this doesn't apply to Overwatch, but but let's say Ninja, for example, right? So he's obviously a mechanical god in Fortnite. Right. And, and, but let's say Fortnite was a, was a, t- was more of a team game. Like, let's say he was playing squads or something where it was a, a, a totally different, a totally different environment than playing by yourself. 
um, playing playing solo in Overwatch it requires there you know there are crossover skills that are requ- that 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 exist both in full team play and solo play but there's a totally different skill set and your your mentality and your play style have to change dramatically playing in solo queue versus playing with uh, a consistent team of people and the game is ultimately built to play with a consistent team of people so that that's when the game is being played at its height when it's being ultimately realized is when there is otherwise esports would just be let's put a bunch of random fucking top 100 players <laughs> into into teams on the fly and good luck hope you win the lottery and then you're off to the fucking races because for people to say that you're that you're a worse player for for being better when you're playing in a team which is the way the game is meant to be played versus playing by yourself where you can mechanically be good we saw this with people in 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 league of legends quite frequently where teams will call up people who are gods on the ladder play solo queue on the ladder and they're fucking gods and then they bring them into a team environment and they're shit that's just because that's how they're conditioned exactly the the thing is is the entire esports team-based gaming yes is all conditioned that way. Yes. It is dog eat dog world. Yes. Fuck your teammate. Carry yourself. Yes. Pick what role you want, but only in the highest of the elite, the top 100 that are playing in front of the casters and in front of the world. Those are the ones that are playing the game the way it's meant to be played so uh, with with teamwork and 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 uh, coordination and actual because uh, I, I actually played a really solid Tracer game earlier today, and I didn't get uh, gold medals. I didn't get three <laughs> gold medals. I had one gold medal for for damage. Shame on you. But but I, I know the and, but <laughs> what what a lot and there was a couple people in the chat that were like, dude, that that was a fire game, and it was what I was doing as Tracer, and having people away and prolonging uh, the push up and 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 actually. Playing the game for what it was, not playing team deathmatch, yeah. but actually using uh, the 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 tracer the hero. is tracer is to harass and break them up That's and make it. them confused. It's tracer. It. Tracer has the ability, especially in lower leagues, to pub stomp and just kill literally everything. But the, in reality, tracer is get in, yeah. tickle somebody's asshole until they're like until they're not doing what they wanted to do originally yeah. to turn around and deal with her. Get yeah. the fuck out. And occasionally drop a bomb in and kill a couple of people. Yeah. That is Tracer. Yeah, but people but expect to, to roll down to Ass Tickler. But, yes, but, but people but expect Tracer to be like when they're watching people stream and just kill everything and get all golds and see, just everything. I can do that. I can do that because I'm in silver and mechanically sure, my, exactly. my mechanics are but, shitting all over these but guys. But that's not what it's made for. But that's for. not that's not actually what typically exactly. wins games <laughs> like or 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 it, it is kind of winning games now. In but silver. when you get higher, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the people on my team were like, "Dude, congrats, man! You got fucking gold, bud. Yeah. But we lost the game, you fucking cuck. Yeah. Learn how to play, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So that that's Halo, the thing. motherfucker. The, do the, you the speak prob- it? The problem is, is in, in the MOBA scene and in the team games, is it's all dog eat dog world, and that's just I have that mentality. A lot of people have that mentality until you're forced to play in another way, and it's like you got to grind through the fucking." The gauntlet, and most people don't make it to the to the end goal. No. It's like you got to live your life and 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 go to confession so, and and, have, and live a thing, and then a, and then go to the pearly gates, and <laughs> only a few get to walk amongst the God Himself. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just it's crazy. So I have, I have a question then, and it's an interesting point you just brought up because somebody, uh, well, inadvertently brought up because somebody talked about this in my stream yesterday. Was um, you know, I can't remember who it was, so I apologize. But uh, do you think that it would play out differently if people didn't see their medals at the end of the game? No, you know what? I I, I love the medal thing. Like I do too. Uh, but in terms of people, but in terms of people focusing on that being, did I do well or not? Like what you just said, you had a fire yeah. tracer game. You got one medal that was gold. You know, and people tend to hyper focus on it. They get to eat. I'm, I'm, I'm like that too. Like I could play Reinhardt and get four gold medals, but it doesn't mean that I played Reinhardt appropriately. I didn't protect my team enough. Maybe I only blocked seven thousand damage in a match. That's trashed here, right? So if they're not seeing medals as their 
major form of reinforcement of how they played that match versus whether they just won or lost based on playing their role more appropriately. Do you think the medals kind of play a bit of a role in how people shape their play? It does, but at the same time, it also creates a competition amongst your teammates where it actually it elevates me, where it's it's almost like if I'm playing against another or playing with another great DPS or a good mm. DPS, I, I, I'm fighting to outperform him, which yeah. ultimately makes it so that I play better. I know what you're saying where it's like, okay, you're not really helping with the objective and, and all this other stuff. Just add objective-based medals, more of them. like just you, you, you can, but at the same time, the people, once again, about conditioning, yeah. we're conditioned to want to kill things. It's it's just the reality of it. Even in, in, in MOBAs, that's why most low league greedy. players stay low league is they start chasing kills. They want to get that last hit. They just they can't let somebody with 15 health go back, but they have to overextend and put themselves in a harm's way and then die and lose an objective. If then they would have, it's just as powerful. Um, it, it's almost like in StarCraft, it can, it can probably relate a little bit better, where there's an army that is pretty fucking small against an army that is really big. But the really big army doesn't know how small the other army really is. So what the small army does for a good player is, listen, if I let him have all the confidence in the world, he's just going to come and just kill me flat out. But if I start moving up towards him and I go outside his base and I even poke up like I'm getting ready to attack, next thing you know it, this guy or gal, or whatever, is putting up defense, is scanning, is is preparing for defense, even though, even though you have no uh, you have no plans whatsoever to attack. You're just presence. Presence is just, sometimes, I'm telling you, it's, it's it, especially in StarCraft, it can be, uh, it's, it's part of the strategy. So, it's sort of the same thing. In, in Overwatch, if you have these medals of participation medals, nobody really fucking cares. And I and as long as you as long as there is a kill death ratio, now if you didn't put how many kills you have at all or eliminations or assists or any of that stuff, then maybe yeah, that might create a different dynamic where people are fighting uh, you know, for I don't even know how they would do how how they would make medals based upon that. But I also believe that when you dumb it down like that, it becomes almost like a HOTS, where you also lose that competitive juice, the one that gets your fucking blood pumping when you just wreck three guys and you see the medals go up and the eliminations go up and you're searching for that play of the game. If you if you dumb it down to the point where, hey, everybody, let's hold hands and fucking skip around and we're all gonna play together and it's gonna be magical the way the game is meant to be played i'm not playing that game because that game is for pansies that game is for fucking people that that have self-esteem issues that can't fucking handle themselves that aren't competitive that that are just i don't want to play that game that game is for pussies i want to get in there and have some stakes i want to get angry i want to be fucking mad at my partner and I want to push through and then call him a fucking cuck at the end after I carry his bitch ass. Those are the things that get me going and I think that's what gets a lot of people going. That's why you hear those war cries. You know, like when 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 you do this crazy shit and people are fucking shitting all over you and it was like that that video that I tweeted out about the guy in the fighting uh, the fighting community where it was that little nerdy right, white little nerd, kid yeah, came and, back and, and, the, the, and guy, the big yeah. black guy was like, yeah, motherfucker, I'm fucking you up. You're getting fucked. And the nerdy white guy beats his ass and he's like, hey, and he's so calm. And, and then at the end, he's like, yeah, I know you're going to want to come back here so you can get the taste of my dick out your mouth. And everyone's like, yeah. oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah. That's, that's what it's all about, man. For me, that's what it's all about. And I think all of us got that, got that, like, it's, it's what gets you going, man. If, if HOTS was just too, or uh, Overwatch was just too skippity doo and everyone's happy and you've got the odd competitive match and everyone's getting the rocks off. Listen, if I want to watch a perfectly formulated uh, game of, of Overwatch, I'm going to go watch the fucking Overwatch League. 
It's a beautiful looking thing. They've got great overlays. They got wonderful casters. They got this all the flash and glamour. They're talking about strategy, and it's just it's all coming together nicely. That's wonderful. But when I want to fucking play the game and I want to let out some rage and some frustration, I want to carry and feel accomplished at the end of it. I want to go in there and I want to rack up some kills and I want to have a struggle and then I want to get over that struggle. That's what it is to me. I, as I, a competitor. And, and I'm, 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 I'm with you for sure. I'm with you for sure. I, I just have different limitations for when I get, I get, I get, okay. So when I'm angry, I play better. But when I get tilted, which is different than being angry, then it's all Bad over but happen. the crying because now I'm just playing like shit. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a fine line that you got to walk. You, sometimes you have to let yourself get angry so that you wake the fuck up and you start playing, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. So that oh, was yeah. me. That was me yesterday. Get angry. I get quiet and then I go on a, on a rampage, right? And you just, but then, then there's that fine line and somebody says something fucking dumb or they do something stupid and then you go on tilt and then it's game over. <laughs> and coming back from tilt is so much oh, okay. harder than coming down off of being angry. It is oh, yeah. so much <laughs> oh, harder. Tilt, tilt will just wreck you because you yeah. stop caring, right? You, and, st you stop playing the way you play and you start playing so your emotions. People, people ask me, to, why do you play PUBG when you, when you say it's shit all the time? You get so angry at it. You fuck over. Like, why do you play Overwatch? You obviously hate the fucking game. It's like, oh, I'm... I'm a competitive fucking person. I just because I'm yelling and screaming and I'm angry and it's whatever, that just means I'm alive, motherfucker. It doesn't mean that I that I that I I, I absolutely, you know, that I I mean everything that comes out of my mouth. Sometimes when I say I I hate this you're game, I venting, actually bro. hate it. You're, ve you're, you're venting. You're, venting. Most of the time. you're yeah, getting it out. You when you that. again, it's if I feel like most of the people that say that shit never played a competitive sport in their entire life. They've they've never experienced what that's like because they must think that that sports everyone's just happy all the fucking time or some shit you play you play hockey you play basketball you play for, you know for american <laughs> football or european football well european football everyone just cries and does their fucking makeup and shit i don't know what the fuck that's about but it, all these other sports you get angry and you're yelling at teammates and you're like you're you're like half beating the shit out of each other on the, uh, like just like getting yourself riled up and you fucking go because you want to win and you get angry yes. when you don't win and because yes. if you don't get angry when you don't win you never fucking win because you're just pussyfooting around exactly. all over the place. You're, what are you playing for? If you're not playing to win, what are you doing? Having fun? Mm. You're playing a competitive game. If you want to play to have fun. fun, go play Hello Kitty Island fucking adventure. But if you're going to come to a stream and you're going to wonder when somebody's angry, I get if it's not entertaining. If you watch somebody come in, you know, you yeah. don't want to watch somebody be angry all the time. That's cool. I get that. There's a reason why I only get like maximum 70 people watching me play Overwatch versus you know, whatever, why me playing like, I don't know, Ikea simulator putting it at a desk at like 400 people is like people from an entertainment standpoint might not enjoy it as much, but you got to understand that if you're a competitive person, very few, I've known almost zero competitive people in my life that, that play any game or do anything and they don't get upset when they lose or they don't vent because you have to, you, you have to be in that mindset. It's a, it's like a hard, it's like the harsh reality is like when you're, when you're in the workplace and people are getting promotions and shit and you're not, and you're like, oh, and the world is out to get me. No, that dude or that chick worked harder than you did, sucked more dick, kissed more ass, did whatever the fuck they needed to do. And you were just angry at the system the whole time. It's just, mm. you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get angry. Get comfortable with being angry. It's okay to be angry. Don't kill a child or some shit. That's, you know, that's a problem. But get angry when you're doing shit. Get angry when you're doing your desk job and fucking Susie from accounting didn't get her shit done in time. And now it's put you back behind. Just a moment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, get, you know, get, ang get at it. Because you get better that way. You know, it's it's fine if you don't want to and you're just playing the game to have fun. That's totally cool. But don't expect everyone else oh, I just called to, pussies, to bro. do that. That's hey, why, man, and that's why yesterday... Relax, man. Why are you getting so mad? It's, it's like, just a game, bro. It's not yeah. just a fucking... Well, it is a game, it bitch. Is. But if you want to go and fucking play a hero for the first time, go play quick match and don't come into competitive and fucking cancer up my team. Like, go oh, fuck yourself, buddy. You want to you wanna talk shit? Fuck you. Report me then, bitch. Give me 24 hours off this shithole because I can't handle you anymore. Yeah. God damn. That's how I oh feel. God. Go ahead, <laughs> bitch.
Report me, pussy! That's all you got! Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck everybody, report! Who gives a fuck? I'll make a new account, bitch! Motherfucker! <laughs> It's just, it's just silly to me. I like, I, I, I understand why I get it. It's also why I'm very choosy sometimes as to the times I play with my community, because I can't turn that off sometimes. And I'm gonna yell at my community members, like just people playing yeah. with me, because they poke your buttons too. Like, you know like, oh, I just buttons. want to come in and I'll meme it up with Adam, and then like I'll get Bad fucking time, angry. Man. I'll get fucking angry like, at the. We line. are memeing. And then, then, playing for real boys. I don't want I don't want them to, you know, get upset with the fact that I'm screaming at them and shit. I can't turn that off. So yesterday when people kept saying, you know, solo queue is AIDS, why don't you just play with some of us? You know, tons of us in the community play this is like cause I don't want you guys to think I'm an actual asshole because if we play together, somebody's gonna fuck up. I'm gonna get angry at you for not, you know, playing your role because we're playing hurt ranked. Your feelings. And I'm gonna, gonna hurt, hurt your, your feelings. feelings. Yeah, but Adam, you're not supposed to hurt my feelings. I've been here for five years supporting you. See, that's that's the then that's why I've been I here just, for five years. This don't, is don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been here for five <laughs> years, Adam. I've given you. You don't six, talk to me like that. Maybe seven hundred dollars out of my life, my time, and you're yelling at me. <laughs> that's anyway. That's that's where it is. That's where anyway, it is. What a great, what a great conversation that turned out to be. That had absolutely nothing to do with anything. Panic. I'm glad you had some input there. That was good. I liked it. <laughs> I don't I play. It. I don't play games anymore. I don't have time. <laughs> I'm, I don't I'm play not saying, yeah. I'm just saying Jeff and I dominated because all we did was scream into the microphone. Yeah, for like I'm 25 just like minutes. competitively. I'm like I don't play competitive Overwatch because I'm like I can see how stressed <laughs> you two are. I work a full time job. I'm like panic, you know what? Panic I'll, was play like me there. I'll play a, quick match. I'll play quick match. All in graphics card discussion. I'll play. That's I'll play quick match. <laughs> well, go. that's yeah, and that's and that's a fair point. I think this is part of it too. And I said this yesterday. Uh, and and I bet Jeff's probably kind of kind of the same way too. Is if Jeff and I had regular jobs and we came back from our regular ass jobs and we were playing video games, we probably wouldn't have it turned to eleven so hard in some of these situations. <laughs> We'd be competitive and we might still get upset and shit. But since we do this for a living. <laughs> this is where we get our challenge from. If we're just, if you're a competitive person, you sit on your ass and you're playing single player games all the time. You, you, uh, you know, unless you're playing a really hard fucking game, you don't necessarily feel challenged as an individual yeah. playing video games. And so when you go, uh, that's why, you know, people, especially hyper, uh, hyper uh, competitive people like Jeff will actively hunt for a game to grind for that reason, especially if you're a streamer, a large part of it is you need to feel like you're accomplishing some shit because you're not doing oh, it outside of, of your stream. You, you turn your stream off after like eight to 12 hours of streaming. You go watch Netflix and go to bed. Like, what did you do? You're not building something. You don't see a finalized product. You don't, you don't, you're just playing fucking video games. So we get so much more aggressive. You contemplate going to get a job. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you're like, I need to feel like I've it, accomplished something. Is it that time? Exactly. Is it that time? Yeah, in Heroes, I'm a quick match legend. You know, I play quick play, win all my games. Go into Hero League, I start losing. I'm just like, nah, man, I can only play like three games tonight. I want to win them. <laughs> Go play quick match. Yeah. I don't care pretty, about drafting. I want to play freaking Blaze. It's pretty much, it's pretty much how, it, uh, how it goes. Jeff, hit me up with a little jingle for movies and TV. Movies. Steven Spielberg, Halo TV. Before you TV. say that, what? I'm jumping. I'm jumping your thing. Okay. Another big thing happened today that All was right. surprising. Hit up. They friggin' bumped the Avengers release date up like a week and a half. Excuse they just went from like May to April like April 27th, 27th. Now, yeah. Did they First have? Time I've a, seen them. Did they have a? They reason? just said that we're gonna we're gonna launch it earlier. Deal that with was it. it. And you know, you want to know what was cute about it is uh, Robert Downey, of yeah, course. Yeah, they tweeted wanted, it out. Yeah, he did the tweet. He's like, oh, this looks awesome. Is there any way we can, you know, see this sooner? And they're like, oh, well, actually, you can. Oh, like, my God. What about my friends? <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, he so, invited, yeah. like, he invited, he invited, um, like, then they, Marvel added, like, a bunch of the other actors. And he's like, what about the whole world? And then Marvel's like, consider it done. <laughs> and then they, like, new poster, April 27th. I wonder what the actual reason for that though. I don't was. know. Like, like, was I, it was it in the well, they was it do, in the same window as something else or like? No, 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 no. Um, the the what I think it is 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 that when Black Panther is moving out. No, um, they they have always kind of been different parts of the world see the movie at different times. 
what I think it is and what I've been from other people that I listen to in the, in the movie world, um, there is probably going to be a significant death uh, in the film. There's, there's going to be something of huge importance being done in the film and they don't want uh they don't want spoilers out for other parts of the world long before they they want to do a worldwide release everybody's going to get the movie at the same time and that's the show mm. um and i think it's it's probably be, and i also believe that they had this planned the entire time i think that this has been okay uh they 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 locked down the date like they always do long long ago and uh there's always been this sort of a truce in hollywood where companies um will, they don't will step on each other yeah they don't step on each other for 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 the for you reasons. never know you never know when you never know when it's going to be your movie that's going to get stepped on exactly and so people people just don't do it it's it's just it, they can but they They're just gonna don't do it superhero movies at the same time so the um the the movie that's probably going to get fe- affected the most is the rocks movie which uh which is rampage so there, the, I think Rampage comes out the week before. So now I think in its second week, it's going to be going up against, uh, you know, Avengers, which is Rip, um, and Rampage already, you know, kind of looks meh to begin with. So um, that's going to really hurt, and that's the main reason why a lot of these companies don't don't do this sort of thing, um, is because it's just uh, it's just this etiquette, and now Disney is like, yo, fuck y'all. Uh, we're gonna do what the fuck we want to do, and this <laughs> movie's coming out sooner. We're gonna do a worldwide release. You know, Black Panther's crushing it. Marvel's just crushing, and uh, deal with it. So we I think I, I think something is going big is gonna happen in this movie, and they they wanted to get this out worldwide. There Same you time. go. Well, we're That's all gonna get to experience it a week sooner. Yippee! Sorry for cutting you off. No, that's way. fine. <laughs> Steven Spielberg uh, was producing, no, I'm not involved any further than that, but uh, producing uh, the Halo TV series is starting filming this fall after being stuck in production hell for what seems like a millennia. Uh, the District 9 based one or? No, this is, okay, so this is, this is the one where originally it was going to be a movie and then it got, uh, it got, it got morphed into, yeah, then it got morphed into like, uh, Spielberg morphed it into a television series they wanted to do. Uh, and that was in like 09 and 2010. And then it just, it had, it had dates and stuff. It was supposed to be two, actually it was supposed to, um, 2015, sorry. In, alongside Halo 5. It was supposed to be going on. They missed that window miserably. Uh, and now here we are where it's starting to, apparently it's, it's scheduled to start in, uh, in the fall. Now I haven't been interested in Halo as a video game in a very long time, but I've always enjoyed Halo as a, as a property. I've enjoyed the characters in Halo for the most the books part. books were actually really good. Yeah. The books were well, were, uh, were well written. And I think there's <laughs> a lot of, uh, a lot of good lore and a lot of good, uh, obviously action to be had, uh, with, with Halo. Um, I don't off the top of my head recall much of Spielberg's small screen stuff going particularly well, but just having his name on Halo uh, makes me a little bit happier than if it was just some random uh, dude producing it. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a little controversial. Go ahead. Yeah, this is this is actually a question towards you, Jeff, because I haven't been up on it. But um, has Spielberg? done anything really relevant Uh in the past like three or four years again no i'm not discounting any stuff he's done in the past but i haven't like heard his name or like have any recognition of stuff he's done in the past couple of years that's had any like big boom or recognition Mm, not overly yeah that just might be me being ignorant though no 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 i mean he's definitely he's definitely done done some films he's got the big one coming out here soon the uh ready player one which is a video game related one but is he like directing it or is he like yeah, it's a. Oh, it's, he's it's actually Steve, directing. Yeah, it's Steven Spielberg directed. Um, to my full knowledge, I can double check on that. But I'm, I'm I can almost, check that. I'm almost certain. Um, and then he also did the um that F the DFG or I didn't see it. It's uh fuck. What's somebody's somebody probably will uh know what it's called. Um, but nothing, nothing like you know crazy. 
Nothing, nothing crazy. Um, he's done. Uh, yeah, the B BFG. That's what it's called. I think that was like his. Oh, last BFG. Sort of, yeah, the big friendly yeah. giant. Yeah, the Roll yeah. Doll uh, adaptation. Yeah, and it, he's doing Indiana Jones Five. I know that. Mm. Um, and he's also yeah. A lot of it's is is is, is, is executive producing a, a lot of stuff. Yeah, like I haven't seen him like direct anything big recently. Yeah, well, how ready, old, ready is, how old is Spielberg now? Oh, dude, he's got to be in his late sixties, man. He's got to. He's born in nineteen forty six, so he's going on his seventies. Yeah. Um. But yeah, Ready Player One looks really cool. It looks different. Um. That that that's going to be interesting. Definitely, definitely going to be checking that out. The the with the Halo thing, it's <clears throat> it scares me because for one, Steven Spielberg isn't directing it. Yeah, know, yeah. So well, that's why like, that's why I preface that with it, he's producing you know? this only. He's also produced some garbage. Yeah, too, exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. So and that's, that was Steven the other preface. Spielberg doesn't mean anything. around it. Don't really. I mean, it, it holds a little bit of weight, but yeah. it's about as much weight as you can yeah. as it can hold. You know what I mean? Um, and and, and I think Halo works if it's done on the big screen with a big budget with the right director, you know, somebody like, uh, um, uh, 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 district nines, uh, Jason, uh, Blom camp or whatever. Yeah, Bloom camp, camp, or Bloom you, camp. Whatever. Um, that, and you can almost see it. it I mean, he, he was supposed to do the halo and yeah. a lot of it in looked just like halo. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, with the right gritty director, um, it can, I think it could work. Problem is, in a TV show, how big of a budget is there really going to be? How much can they really do? How much buzz is there really going to be about this? Um, I, I think they should just let this idea die, but, you know, I don't I even think, know if it's going to happen. I think, <laughs> I well, really yeah, don't yeah know we don't happen. know. I mean, they're, they're scheduled to, but they've already been in the past scheduled to start Many filming. Times, so, yeah. uh, you know, who, who, who knows how that's <laughs> going to pan out? I mean, I, I think the, the time... And you never and you never know with these things because it could always be it could always surprise you. But I think the time for a Halo series or a movie has kind of come and gone. It's gotten to the point now where it's an awkward point in the in the in the series where uh, interest in Halo isn't exactly particularly through the roof. You know they're going to announce probably Halo Six or or whatever at E3, or they're going to have a trailer or something, and and the Halo community is going to be pretty excited about it, but it's not going to be like when we were in Halo 1, 2, and 3, where it was yeah. everyone on the planet in gaming yeah. was eyeballing Halo. Uh, and, you know, what was what was Bungie going to be able to pull out of the hat next kind of thing? I don't think we're at that anywhere near that point anymore. And Dude, it's a TV series. Who gives a fuck? And it's so, a, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, if how, you told if awesome you told me be? that you Halo's were going to do be budgeted though, Halo's like a big budget. <laughs> exactly. Property, so problem. if you it's told to me do that you were going to do a a short form series on Netflix for Halo, I'd say yes. If you're going to try and drag this bad boy out into some weird multi season fucking whatever, it's not going to happen. Well, that this was just no way. It's like a problem, and it's historically been an issue where you have a big budget property trying to be adapted for TV. It doesn't work. Yeah. Out. Sarah Connor Chronicles was like a big example of it. Yeah. Terminator is a huge big budget franchise, and Sarah Connor Chronicles was a fantastic show, but Fox canceled it because they're like, it is too expensive to make yeah. this show. Like, <laughs> way too expensive per episode. And you can see in the second, like, in the second, I think if they made it in the second season, you can see they were like started cutting corners. Like, instead of using, like, headset props, they were using, like, Xbox headsets for things that you can tell. <laughs> and it was, like, you can tell they're, like, trying anything to cut costs because they know the show's popular. But they're, like, we can't make it work. It's too expensive. Yeah. I mean, it's not, this isn't Game of Thrones, right? And this, yeah. thing, needs, this thing needs a budget. Like, this yeah. thing needs a serious budget. It needs a Game of Thrones these budget. these aliens and just the fucking suit Alien itself. Alien ships, and the, the, the special ships. effects. It's, like, hard. It doesn't really matter how you tackle the aliens. It's going to be expensive no matter, how you, no matter how you do it, right? Yeah, I mean looking like star trek it's gonna look like a budget star trek and it's just like you know you know how okay. i envision star trek it? I, now I, is hard to do because it's got needs all the cg i look yeah. at it i look at it like how bright turned out bright was not was not bad but they also were wise enough to constrain it to a to a movie yeah. length format despite the fact it kind of plays out like a series yeah. and uh but it's still but you were watching it still going you know i i'm seeing shades of b film in here because it was it was something that was for the budget that they had, they kind of had to stretch 
uh, stretch it out in spots. And so I, I envision whatever is going to come out with Halo is going to be kind of on along the lines of yeah. Bright. That's uh, cool. yeah. and, and we'll see how they Still fandangle it. No, I mean, I, 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 I always will care a little bit about Halo in terms of how they use the property because I, I've always considered Halo to be a very important part of, you know, the gaming timeline. Um, it was, you know, the game that, that, that people then said, okay, <clears throat> console shooters, we can, we can do that now. You know, Halo has figured out how to do console shooting and not just do it, but do it really, really, really friggin' well. Uh, <laughs> and so I, I've always been kind of sad with how, the, how Halo has trailed off so awkwardly in the more recent, uh, years, but yeah, we'll see what, we'll see what comes out of it. I'm going to go with, it's probably never going to happen. <laughs> uh, but we'll see how that pans out because we only got to wait until the fall to, to find That's out. Right. We might not have to wait that long. Chris Hemsworth, who has been, um, busy being Thor for half of his adult life, uh, is apparently in talks to star in a men in black reboot slash spinoff. Uh, you want to know the funny thing about that? I was just looking at Steven Spielberg on IMDb and he is working on a men in black spinoff. Well, there you have it. There are connections here that I didn't even realize. Mm. Um, yeah, what are, your th what are your thoughts on that, gentlemen? First of all, I want to know your thoughts on rebooting <laughs> or expanding on the Men in Black universe outside of Will Smith uh, and how you feel Mr. Hemsworth fits puzzle piece into uh, a Men in Black environment. I wouldn't mind seeing Hemsworth do something else. He's actually like a pretty funny person. So taking him out of the Marvel universe and putting him into some other like possible persistent universe could be really fun. Um, mm. But I don't know, like the last two men in blacks are trash. So it all depends on how they go about doing it. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool with it. Chris Hemsworth is awesome. I think he's a great actor. He's done dramatic roles. He's done comedy. Um, and then he's done, you know, Thor, which is like, combination of sort of both he did yeah the, the more recent or the most recent thor movie had a lot of comedy in it if i'm they not did mistaken the comedy yeah. because they did all like those comedy side pieces well, and he was like in ghostbusters the, the newest ghostbusters where he all was right. the like the the dude and he was funny in that like he was the he he's was a funny guy funny. Yeah. he's a funny guy um i think that he would crush it he's used to green screens he's used to um to to pretending like there are things mm -hmm. around him i mean so who is who is his secondary? Because Men in Black tend to tend to be you know come in duos. So who who they do we pair get, up with with Hemsworth? They need to get the <laughs> Rock guy from Thor with the oh, well, yeah, all the one guy, liners. Yeah, yeah, he was, was hysterical. But he's a, the, the, that's the Aussie guy, right? Uh, I forgot. He's he, got the weird name. I think he's Australian. The actor. He might be New Zealander or whatever. New or Zealand, yeah. But one of like, those two. but they had really good chemistry. It was really funny. Guys. I think uh, I don't know. I I I I don't know. I think um, I, I you have, have no to think idea. of it like a buddy cop movie, right? Because yeah. that's essentially what Men in Black what is. is. So so who does Chris Hemworth pair up in a buddy cop movie with? Who Honestly, juxtaposes? Will, who juxtaposes? Will Smith to hand it over. Because I mean, well, you had Tommy Lee and, and Will Smith are a crazy juxtaposition. I mean, they're about two opposite ends of the spectrum you could possibly imagine. I think, so. I think Brian Cranston would be really cool. Oh, that he's, would be. He's a good older, one. rugged, yes. can act. He's he yes. can play the straight guy, like the straight be, type. But he can also be ass. funny as fuck. Funny as fuck when he needs to be. I think Brian Cranston would be a really, really good casting fit. And Brian Cranston doesn't have a huge amount of stuff on his plate either. So. Um, that would what do you work. Mean? He's Zordon, man. That's true. Yeah, he's Zordon shit. now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, hey, I'm I'm down for more Men in Black. Uh, yeah, I wasn't like blown away by Men in Black two and three, but Men in perfect. Black I still, three, I still, I, still I still enjoyed them. They like still, I still, they gotta, still were fine. I got a giggle. And Men in Black three made the most money out of any of the Men in Blacks, mm. and uh, you know it made almost eight hundred billion dollars. Um, they tried million, to get mean? or eight hundred million. You know, eight hundred so, billion be pretty woo! pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> they, ain't made, they ain't working anymore. Yeah, we'd be, on men, in, we'd be on men in black forty six at this point if that made eight hundred billion dollars. Um, and then you know they they were gonna. They, Will Smith said he never wanted to do them uh, anymore. So right. so that's obviously yeah. not gonna happen. And then they were gonna uh, restart the the um, reboot it with. You, I don't know if you guys heard about that with Twenty One Jump Street, where they were gonna merge. 21 Jump oh, Street yeah, with Men gonna, in Black. They were going to somehow merge those two universes. They were in the same universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. you're going to have, you know... Uh
Um, oh God, Channing Tatum, Channing Tatum, and that would and, actually, and that Channing would be a Tatum funny and Chris and Hemsworth would be hysterical. It would be, but I think you need the older, the older. You throw in Brian uh, Cranston and Jonah Hill, and you got yourself an ensemble cast, ridiculous yeah. movie of stupid. But it's not diverse enough, guys. We're not. It's not diverse. We need. We need diversity now, like the we old need women or ship. black. We need to be women, black, or both. We're like a, a black, black woman, female, Jewish, quadriplegic. Uh, yeah, we need we need something else in there. So I don't, I don't yeah, know. I think, we'll I, think it'll, I think it'll do fine. I'll definitely go see it. Um, they said it wasn't going to be a sequel. It wasn't going to be a reboot. It's, gonna be it's just going to be a reimagining. Be of. Uh, it's just going to continue on with whatever has been going on, right? So yeah. we'll see. And, uh, yeah, Chris Hemsworth is is uh is the front runner right now and he's got no other big projects besides thor and uh that's someone, really the show someone in chat just said you can't have men in black anymore oh i've got some actually be, i don't have needs to be people in color i haven't i haven't written this down yet but i'll, I'll add this on as the, as the next the next piece of this but um uh oh shit i had something else i was gonna say about this too but I was, oh percent chance all right on the record, percent chance of a cameo for the noisy cricket. It'll probably seventy percent. I, I think it'll probably happen. Actually, yeah. no, noisy cricket. You mean the gun itself? Yes. Yeah, one hundred and twenty percent. Yeah, it's almost it's almost guaranteed. I okay, think. They, they, they're gonna have they got not men in black some. without the friggin' noisy cricket. That was in every movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, last thing. Yeah, like the any, knowing glance. You just you, you just reminded me by saying the way what you did about the whole men thing. Uh, Fr Fresh Prince of Bel Air is going to get a reboot. Okay, stay with me because it's going to be the Fresh Princess. Is Will Bel -Air. Smith going to be the uncle? I don't think so, Tim. There's a, there's a zero probability Will <laughs> Smith would ever touch anything. <laughs> That is named the Fresh Princess of Bel Air. All right. Yeah, they don't need to reboot that shit. That show still holds up to this day. But like, we need and, yeah. we need more reboots, and we need more specifically. We we need more reboots with as much because Girl as much, Meets World did so well. As much female lead rolling as possible. As much as we can cram in there, shoehorn it in. For no other merit but for the attempt at equality, we need to bring back as much of it as possible. <laughs> Don't do that. I made I a joke. I made a joke on Twitter. I, re I retweeted this the other day, and I made a joke. It's like the year is twenty forty seven. We've rebooted every eighties and nineties sitcom, and they're all you know leading female characters. There it's hasn't been an original fresh... idea in two decades. To the stale, real quick. I'm going to tell you that right now. There'll be nothing fresh about that show. <laughs> It's going to feel old and stale and rotten, and it's just, no, don't do it, please. Anyway. I, I just, yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't. I, I, I can't. I hope it doesn't happen. I hope it doesn't happen. It probably will, but I hope it doesn't happen. Not just because it's stupid that it's the Fresh Princess of Bel-Air, but also because that show, of all the shows that you want to choose to try and resurrect, that might be the least... Of them off the top of my head that I could come up with from that era that you would want to dabble in because there is not much about that show that you could even hope of improving on or even running parallel to even no, being in step idea. with it. It's a bad idea. Um, uh, I was watching a um an interview that it was the twenty year anniversary. It's either yeah, I think it was twenty year anniversary of it's either twenty or twenty five. Of uh, Family Matters, yes, and uh, or oh, no, yeah, Family Matters. That's the one with uh, Urkel. Yeah, the one yeah. with Urkel. Yeah, and um, all of them, everybody was there. All the entire cast it was crazy. Even the and, daughter that disappeared. Uh, no, not that one. <laughs> uh, but all the main, all I love the main, those shows. the main ones, right? Um, and they all are begging to do a Netflix show, uh, and bring it back. They're because like, Full House is doing really well. It's doing extremely well. They're begging. They're they're all like, yes, yes. They're, all of them. They're like, we want to do it. We want to do it. 
I and they give... look the same, bro. They look the Jaleel same. Jaleel White has not I aged. I don't give a shit. like the same. black Keanu Reeves. I don't give a shit about, about Full House, the reboot. I would well, that was give, funny, though. I would I'll give many fucks about a, about a comeback oh. of Family Matters. Oh, oh, I would love that. It'd be so good. And it's like <laughs> everybody's still that age where they're still like they're a family. Like yes. you, can, you can buy it. Like you could just yeah. totally buy it. You can it. still make it happen. It, it, it's sold. It's sold. It's sold. It's sold. It's sold. That, don't it's like the wrong. 20 years later. Check it out. Like I, yeah, I, I, well, I was going to say, like, I, I, I get, you know, I, I'm like the last guy, you know, I like the, you know, the check it out thing. You know, it was funny for a little bit. And, you know, Bob Saget, you know, low key being a dirt Dirty old man, you know that's funny too. You know, uh, ha, ha, ha. Uh, you know the Ols Olsen twins did a you know few too many lines of coke, and now they're you know now the 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 one Olsen sister that nobody cared about suddenly the most popular Olsen sister out of nowhere. One's like married to an eighty year old, the other's like fucking strung out on some oh. shit. The thing with the family matters is there's no crackheads. The whole family's. <laughs> Wow. When you can when you can start that whole thought with there are no crackheads. They successfully made it through life with childhood actorhood and everything. Nobody turned into a raging crackhead. Nobody's been doing bath salts. Straight up on raves. Straight up, dude. It's it's so good, man. I and and after I saw all of them, because I mean, even Urkel still like young enough to like dude, pull he's off not whatever. aged. Dude, the whole What's everybody his name even again? His, um, 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 Jaleel White. Yes, yes, that's it. And even even the the fucking Carl uh, Carl Winslow. They all Reginald they all Bell look, Johnson. They all look like they fucking did back in the day, man. Eddie Winslow, uh, all of them. They're all there, dude. They they. It's just would be. I can't believe they haven't. Th 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 this has got to be in talks. It's got to be. It's got to be. It's I can't. I, I can't even imagine how that doesn't pass. I mean, I guess. I guess the only hurdle for them would be, you know, how do they? How do they run with it? Do we? Do they, they have to get licensing probably from well, the uh, company? That well, well, that it. that, but also just how do they frame this? Because with the full house thing, they kind of did it as a generational shift, right? Like they had the actors come back, but it was. It's. It's been also, you know, it's a. It's a. They're. They're doing like the younger, like the kids of the kids. And and that kind of shit. Like, how do they play that out with with family matters? Do they go that same route? Yeah, I mean, I think they'd have some wives and families. Maybe maybe there'll be like a divorce, or you know, there's some real family matters. So they're older now. You know, deaths in the family, and deal, trying to deal with retirement, and like you know, just shit that fucking you know older families go through, and having grandkids, and and then and those kids doing things like uh like um. Uh, modern family, right? Just kind of grabbing mm. some of those type of scenarios and making it fun and funny. I I think it could work, but that's just maybe just my my nostalgia. Well, yeah, I mean, it, uh, there's I think I think there is equal parts possibility that it goes tits up and equal parts possibility that it's awesome here. I think I I think that uh it, there's great promise, but there have been reboots and continuations of incredibly popular shows that have gone to shit. Um, yep. I mean, I think the best one I can think of, uh, that just, I, I had all the hopes for and it just fell flat as hell was, um, Arrested Development. Uh, I was never into that. Anyway. The original I love Arrested show, Development, but the reboot was not very good. It, exactly. Like, it, didn't, it didn't like they, and they, they haven't released a new season in forever. No. Well, they're they supposed probably to bring shouldn't. back the office now. They've got um, God. they're they're they have like a lot of the old guys. Uh, everybody but like Steve Carell uh, want to do it. So I think they're uh, right now they're going through all this stuff, and um, that might be getting a reboot. So there, this is just you know Netflix is such Z. a juggernaut now yep. that it's these things are becoming a reality, and people are watching it. Like this isn't the great thing about it is is you don't have to be, tune in every Thursday night binge at it. seven. It, it's it's all put up there and you can binge it and you can watch it at your own time and everybody's hooked on Netflix. So it's like, what's the next thing to watch? And even if it isn't the world's greatest thing, people are still going to watch it, still going to do well. So, you know, it's... I Go for it. Look, it can't be possibly any worse than the reboot reboot that we talked about last week, so... That's true. 
Don't you challenge don't. them, Adam. <laughs> don't jinx it, okay? <laughs> I've had enough of my childhood destroyed How by shit that, that you brought to worse. my attention. How you could possibly get worse than that it would be beyond me. I don't Reboot know. Reboot Saved by the Bell. All right, All it's time right. to do, it's time to do some yeah, tech support real quick. We only have a couple yeah. of questions, so that's that's fine. We don't have to, we don't have too much to choose from. Uh, let's see. Questions? Um, <laughs> Will, uh, Will Hawkins asks, what would you rather do, have the norovirus or play another dumb would you rather game? I'm going to let you know right now that I would, I would rather almost have or do anything as long as I didn't have to have the norovirus. That thing is... Awful. That's the cruise ship thing, right? That is the cruise ship AIDS. Okay. Where you're basically out for like a week or more. You can be hospitalized for not being and able to. It comes to out of both ruins. ends, right? It comes out of both ends. You don't eat. You don't sleep. You don't drink. You don't. Yeah, I'll do the wood. Anything. Rather. Nothing. You you just die. You, like literally, people die from that shit because they can't get hydrated into a hospital in time. So, um, short of cutting off my own dick. I'm going with whatever isn't the norovirus. That's basically it. <laughs> I'd contemplate cut my own, my yeah, own dick think, think by the sounds of this. I'd, I'd look at my dick for I a real long it. time, and I'd look at my wife, and if she gave me the, well, you know. I'd you wouldn't die, like, so, <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, no, but I'd probably end my own life, so... Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God! I, uh, Cleveland and his wife had it oh, uh, nah, at the same time. Nah, uh, and they were just dead. And and I think at least one of them ended up in hospital for a couple of days to try and get an to get an IV because it was just game over. There seems to be nothing appealing about going onto a cruise ship. Nothing to me ever. Nothing. I mean, oh, okay, here do, is there anything that would make you want to go on a cruise December. ship? <laughs> yeah. See, I don't want any part of a cruise ship. Zero parts. Nothing about it is appealing to me. All right. I'm going to be honest, okay? So I'm going to Dominican next month, all right? Okay. So I'm going to be away for, for, for a week. And this is the first time that we've gone down south mm. in forever. Mm. It's It's been a while. And I kind of stopped wanting to go because I just get bored. I'm just like, I sit around, I, I drink, and, and but I'm, I'm in the mood right now for a relaxing trip. I mm. just want to fucking go and just... Just chill. You're feel. You're feeling. You're feeling that. Please life. tell me you're going like the first ish, second week of April. No, I'm going. Uh, or, no, 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 no. So, um, <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, today's. Uh, I'm going this month. Sorry. It's oh, March you're going now. to March. Okay. Um, I was like, what the fuck? Um, because I said <laughs> next month. So, when 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 you go down south, whether it's Dominican, Cuba, Mexico, I don't give a fuck. It's all the same. Get off the plane, go on a bus. You drive through the most heinous looking of, of spots where there's just so yeah, much poverty Rock, and eh? you're just going, what in the fuck? And like then you, you go actually, through a gated community into paradise. You li It's <laughs> you quite li like you're driving down the road. You're like, oh, yeah. those are palm trees. Oh, that's someone dead right there. <laughs> that's. That's a dog that looks like it weighs. I shouldn't two be pounds. laughing because it's kind of a fucked up thing. Like these, no, these resorts. But no, but it's actually it's reality. Yeah, like it's you reality, actually yeah. do it. It's a reality. And yeah. then and then you like you said there is then you start seeing men with guns that are like at like borders and gates. Yep. And they're like, hey, are you guys tourists? Yep. Come on in. You go in there. It's like ha 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 ha. ha. <laughs> Pussy drinks, food, <laughs> palm trees, and beaches, right? You're just like, yes, I made it. I fucking, I made it through hell, you know? And then you, and then you just start thinking about the trip that you got to take back, all right? There, uh. there's, 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 there's great to that. Now, you think of a cruise ship, and I'm going, okay, I'm going on a cruise ship for what? To go to an island, essentially. Now, you get to stop at... Three or four different places for like a day great. or two, you know. Yeah. But I'm gonna tell you, for the if you're going if you're going on a down south type thing, they're all the same. A beach yeah. is a beach. Yeah. Yep. Water is water. Yep. Snorkeling is snorkeling. Alcohol is alcohol. And, 
and alcohol is alcohol. <laughs> so what I'm what I'm trying to weigh my pros and cons here. I could either just go on a plane and take that hour bus ride through a third world country, slum dog millionaire, just straight up slum dog, and get there right. Or I can go and I have to physically go to a spot, buy like with with actual currency and pay for this this godforsaken cruise ship, and go and drive there. Actually, drive to the airport, probably fly to Florida, to then go <laughs> on a cruise ship. Well, no, they come here to Halifax. So we okay. most of, most of them, yeah, well, they port they port here. So either way, yeah, I I then gotta go for the next seven days out on sea. Where not only do you not know if you're going to get fucked by weather, I mean, fucked. <laughs> if there's some heavy winds, some heavy rain, some whatever, and that shit starts rocking, bro, I have seen the YouTube videos. Yeah, well, yeah. I ain't going near that shit. I don't care how big the ship is, if it feels like a little city. When you're out in the ocean ocean, the size of the ship significantly starts to not matter at all. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. You'd be you're on an feel, aircraft you're gonna, carrier. You're, you're walking crazy. sideways in the walls. If anything bad happens, you're fucked. You're yep. just you're fucked. And, and I don't care. I don't. It's a cesspool. I just want to be on land. I, I just want to be on. If I'm getting fucked, I want to at least know yes. I can run somewhere. Yes. Or just go somewhere. Or not have the earth shift below me. Like I mean, earthquake obviously is the is the joke there. But just not have everything being tits up yeah. all the time. No. No, thank you. No. And, no, it's, and, and a lot of them, they're just not all inclusive. So you still got to pay for your own drinks. Like you get your buffets and stuff like that or whatever. It's just, there's a whole lot of note. And then you got this disease you're talking about that I never Dude, heard of before. The norovirus. Just, just no. Is, a is so bad. And it's so contagious. Like hyper. It's airborne shit. Literally. Hyper, hyper contagious. It's from airborne shit. And so I'm not, I'm not using the word shit. No, 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 no. That's that's a literal, literally. So ah. you know, it's not like pink eye where you gotta physically rub your face in 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 the shit. It just gets to you. Yeah. And <laughs> and it is it is awful in every way imaginable, down to the possible hospitalization. And uh, no, I already I already have to deal with you know if you're on a plane for like four and a half hours in between stops. Being on a plane with 150 other people. Oh, that's the worst, too. Breathing that in. But 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 you don't get the normal virus on a plane. You might get a flu. You might get it, you know, you might go home and get the body aches and you got like a three or four day shit fest or something. You know, it's whatever. But it's, it, you know, or you get a bad cold or something like that. But you're not going to, you're not going to basically end up hospitalized for it. And yeah, you can get bad weather in a plane, but you usually fly above it 90% of the time and you get like some turbulence and stuff, but it's not, if, if you were going to equate turbulence in a plane to some of the shit that you get on the open seas, I mean, I've, I've, water I've, been, in my room, I've been in on a no. small ferry in the strait between Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. And I can tell you right now, in, the, in a storm <laughs> that a captain said was the worst he had seen in 15 to 20 years, they questioned turning the boat around when we were 15 minutes deep, and then some idiot decided that it was a good idea to keep going. And nah. the whole ship was fucked. We were, do we were catching air off the waves. You were getting weightless. One of our teachers was a 380-pound man. And we had enough time in air for him to get picked up and thrown back in the seats because we caught so much air. The gift shop, which was stupidly full of glass objects to buy for whatever sorry bastard family member you were going to buy a fucking gift shop on a ferry for. You could buy these little, everything was glass. We hit, one, we hit one of those waves and we hit the bottom and there wasn't a dollar worth of merchandise left in that fucking <laughs> gift shop. All of it broken glass everywhere. And then we went sideways into the waves for seven straight hours. So the boat wasn't doing this anymore. It was doing this. And that's normally when people start to projectile vomit. And projectile vomit, they did. There were nurses <laughs> on staff that were dealing with some of the craziest shit I've ever seen. 
I vomit everywhere. You couldn't go. I went to the washroom once in 13 hours. This is a six hour ferry ride that turned into a 13 hour trip. 13 hours. It was so bad. Now nah, I'm good. I went into the washroom. Some jackass thought it was a good idea to go onto the deck to experience nature and all of its fury. <laughs> and when he got, and when he got, when he went out there and he realized that he was making multiple poor life choices by doing so, got back into the ship, but didn't have the fucking wisdom to close the godforsaken door behind him. So the entire section of the ship was flooded out because the water was coming in through the fucking door because there were 50 foot fucking waves outside. So when you went to take a piss, you were in six inches of vomit, piss, shit filled water just so that you could use the washroom. And nah. everything was vomit, urinals vomit, toilets vomit. People passed out in six inches of water on the ground, hit resting on toilet paper just dead to the world that is what rough seas are you're, you're scarred for life too bro you ain't never going on a cruise ship. not a chance in no, fuck I'm again not either. and fuck i've got that. sea legs i didn't i didn't vomit the entire time i played gamecube i kicked an eight-year-old off the gamecube station i said get the fuck out of here it Don't was the only sick, it was the only bolted down chair in the entire joint there was an a, a, a bunch of old ladies playing a card game like canasta or some shit whatever the fuck they were playing on the side and we hit sideways into those ways and we hit a particularly <laughs> bad one and this shit was like on a fucking 60 degree angle and the chairs were not bolted down and there was an 80 year old woman whose chair just kept going and going and going until she fell over out of her chair and did a face plant into the deck mm. of the ship and knocked herself clean out. And I watched that lifeless body roll around on the fucking floor for five mm. to seven minutes before a nurse was notified. And all of her old, old gray haired lady friends were all like, oh, God, Dolores, ah! <laughs> Dolores, she's just, she's just lifeless corpse face on the ground, just. <laughs> rolling with the waves that shit is real yeah. but if you're on a plane jeff and i have been on planes through terrible storms Dude, coming my... back we the plane couldn't land we almost ran out of fuel turbulence and shit babies crying people saying their last real you know, fucking will and testament shit. on an a380 and they told me the flight there was possibly the worst flight they've ever had like it was so bad that it was a 13 14 hour flight if not longer my mom said not once did a stewardess or anyone come around to serve anything because it was so turbulent the entire flight that like the that bar me nuts the bar on like the plane was like dropping shit like because it, it was an a380 so they had like the giant lounge and everything you could just hear glass crashing and everything my mom said look figured i was gonna die but the least the pilot could have done was say hey we're experiencing some turbulence the pilots didn't say jack shit <laughs> probably because they were fucking so like, shitless also oh also, my God. also just gonna toss this out here i know this is gonna be morbid but if i'm going to choose between dying in the atlantic ocean and oh, crashing in a plane day. and just basically dying instantaneously plane i'm going plane i don't want a every titanic time. Nut adam adam jeff Knowing both of your luck would travel, you would be the only two survivors of that ah, crash. Probably. <laughs> I'd be sitting out there in the ocean yeah. from a fucking plane <laughs> in crash. Your seat. Yeah. Sitting in out your there seat. fucking floating on, on a your fucking seat. seat yeah. Just waiting to get eaten by a shark or some shit. Yeah. No. Fuck. Your seat would get clean ejected, no injuries, and you just land in the ocean somehow, and you'd be like, well, shit. Best of both worlds, boys. <laughs> the best of both worlds. Uh, yeah, hashtag fuck cruise ships. Yep. So have fun on yours in, in April or whatever you're going. When you come back and you're and you're out of work because you're oh, shitting I'm going, yourself dry. I'm going in December. So. <laughs> oh, oh, December? Yeah. You're going the winter time? I'm going to fucking Florida and going oh, from there. Oh, you are going. It's a weekend cruise. You, What's the worst that can happen in bring, three days? Dude, bring your own personal IV and just hook that shit up now because you are going to be shitting yourself. All the daiquiris and shit you're going to be drinking are going to be coming right out the other end like rockets. That'll be me soon enough. Can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> Except I'm going to be on ground. I might be going to Mexico in April. Who knows? <laughs> oh, my. Not on a cruise. Yeah, well, that, that, yeah, that I get behind for sure. Um, what is this question? 
Oh god. Okay. This is an interesting enough question that I'm gonna go with this. Mishitaki asks, uh, who is, by the way, a 50-time uh, lifetime supporter, or $50 lifetime. Thank you. $10 current. <clears throat> Said war. War never changes. What rule would you give to all countries who want or do wage war to make the conflicts more interesting? Personally, I would state that the only weapon that can be used would be the pool noodle. How do you even kill somebody? With can you things? repeat that? Over a very long period of time. Hey, can you That's repeat some Chinese that? torture, man. You know what you do, Jeff? All right, here's the answer. I'll repeat it. Here's the answer. You dip the pool noodle, noodle in water, you freeze it, you beat him with that. Mmm, that will work. Yeah. That's, 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 that's what you do. Although, to be fair, not all pool noodles absorb that much water. They absorb some, but not all. Dang so you'd cows. have to, like, you'd have to perforate it a bit, <laughs> and then, yeah, freeze it, and then beat them with that. Uh, so, basically, it's asking, what rules would you give to all the countries involved in a war to make the conflict more interesting? And then he gave right. that pool noodle... I Example. think I've got the best one. I'm going to go with killing them with kindness. Oh. So you, you have to hit them up with just compliments and just being nice. So okay. be Canadian. Killing them with Canadianness. There you go. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go Canadian on uh, this route. I got this one. Okay, what I you got? got? All right, what you got? We're going to Pacific Rim this shit. Each country builds their own giant fucking robot. Okay. And then you round robin tournament that shit. Okay. And then put it on TV for everyone yeah. else not involved yeah. in the war. Put it on Netflix. Make it. And then make the winner and, and each country has to throw each country <laughs> citizens throw money into a pool, and the winning country gets the money. Not bad. I'm gonna go with every country has to choose a uh, a single overplayed song. And weaponize it. Mm. So maybe you want, maybe you want, maybe it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like uh, exaggerated or long term torture. You got them on loudspeakers everywhere listening to Hey There Delilah. Oof. Or maybe, maybe you got to listen to Rockstar by Nickelback. Ah, fuck. Or, or maybe it's, anyway, here's Wonderwall. No, oh, <laughs> giving up. You've won the war. It's over. I couldn't make it through one fucking tune. Why do you have to go and make things so complicated? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, there you go, Avril Lavigne. You know, well, that's technically Justin Nickelback Bieber. at this point, or just yeah. Ah, uh, so there you go. That would be that would be how I would how I would go down. Be like, I'm going right. my giant robot. I want to see giant robots fight. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, what if the giant robots play the song right, what is what, what is what is the one song that you every time it comes on you hear it you instantly have to turn it off do you have do you have a song that drives you fucking crazy that you can't listen to mm, really anything that's taylor swift like if i hear taylor swift on the radio it just goes off like that one is you found me, you found oh, me. Oh, that one. You found me, me, me. Uh, <laughs> fuck it, one. I can just end my own life. <laughs> fuck, that's just the worst fucking design. God damn. Um, anything Kesha? <laughs> oh shit! I think I can listen to Kesha or like listen to Taylor Swift. Honestly, oh, Taylor Swift is so bad. Taylor Swift is How fucking rough. How is she rough. so famous? She's got she's got like a horse face too. Like she just looks like a fucking oh, like oh, a man. giraffe horse. Like I saw I saw this tweet. Like there's just nothing. There's no quality about her. I'm sorry. Like oh, it's I not. I saw like, this tweet uh, where some a guy was just like, bro. So don't ask why, but I was looking at lyrics for a Taylor Swift song. And he like he it literally was just the lyrics of the song, nothing. And he's like, "Isn't this literally the definition of a nice guy?" And it's all stuff Taylor Swift was doing. Oh I yeah, just I just can't stay. I just can't stand her music. I, you know, I just can't stand her music. And she looks so bitchy too. Like, oh, she just looks like such to, a. Uh, she such looks a, like I'm a, gonna use the word. She looks like a cunt. Yeah, like she, she really. She does. looks like a. Where's the manager? <laughs> That's who she, she looks, looks like. Really kind of walk in and be like, "I want to speak to your manager." Yeah, I want to oh, speak to the God. manager. Where is where I am the manager? No, you're not. 
Like that's <sighs> that's that's who Taylor Swift looks like. Um Man, I've had a I've had a bunch over over the years that you just you kind of cuz you know they get overplayed on the radio or whatever, but uh I think I think that uh <sighs> It's got to be Taylor Swift. She's I mean Taylor, bad. Taylor Swift is pretty bad. You kind of so nailed it bad. with Taylor Swift. You kind of nailed it with Taylor Swift, but I I can't I I can't listen to um she's so overplayed. It's just it's it's the combination of all the bad. Just uh, just, uh so bad. Now that you've you said that, I can't even think about what I was originally going to say anymore. Swift, like, bro. You just can't. It doesn't exist. I mean, Hater Delilah is pretty fucking rough it's when it comes bad, on the radio. but it's not it Taylor Swift. <laughs> it's not Taylor Swift. <laughs> it's not fucking Tay-Tay. Come on. <laughs> All right, if you so, had to choose, you only had, or you could only listen to one of these two artists for the rest of your life. It's the only music you could listen to, and you, you couldn't kill yourself to get out of it. All right? Fuck. Taylor Swift or Nickelback? Nickelback. <laughs> I've been Nickelback, Nickelback for days. that's so easy, dude. Never again. You know what? Nickelback's got a couple of fire songs, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. Nickelback's got a couple of fire songs. I agree with you. Tay uh, well, see, can go see, I never, go. I never got... All right, all right, I know this podcast is going long, but I never got the uh, the hate behind Nickelback for their music. You know, they're just doing t- um, they're just doing Nickelback. But then I, I watched, like, this video that broke down why Nickelback became so hated, and I'm like, oh, okay. I kind of understand it. now. Chad Kruger's a fucking dick. Oh, that yeah, guy dude. is an ass. He, oh, has yeah. done, he has done and said some heinous shit. He's, they're just cucks, bro. Just, and he fucking married Avril Lavigne on top of that. Oh. <laughs> like, I mean, does it get any worse? Does it get? Why do you Avril Lavigne? Avril Lavigne, Lavigne did the world a service. Why do you have to go and make things so complicated, Jeff? I don't know. But yeah, I anyway. agree. I'd listen to Nickelback over over Taylor Swift, Swift basically every single time. I kind of in the closet don't even hate Nickelback. I'm just well, gonna be I, honest I, with I you. Don't, I like I don't listen to them. I don't, I don't, I don't listen them, to them, but, but you know, yeah, Some enough, enough people good. do. Some of their early stuff was not bad, but then everything started sounding the same. How you remind me of someday? I mean, it doesn't it doesn't make it it doesn't make it any better that they that they started like signing on other bands that were basically just yeah, also Nickelback. <laughs> So it was bad. It kind of like I get it. Like I get it. But Nickelback had a couple of good songs for sure. Taylor Swift, on the other hand, I don't know. It's kind of hurt. Everything kind of hurts when you got to listen to Tay 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 Tay. You know, I, I think you, what hurts me the most about Taylor Swift is is that is that she's being like I I I, I pre- like we said many times before. I appreciate the grind. All right, I, I appreciate the grind. She's making her bajillions of fucking dollars. I appreciate the grind. But but I've never seen somebody look like such a fish out of water before in the entertainment business. It, it, like, and you'll see this shit. I'm going to make this analogy when I was, I haven't been in a long while now, but when I was super deep into, into K-pop, you'd see this shit where the, the, the production company would choose girls in the group and like, you need to be the rapper. You're the lead dancer. You're the lead singer. And, and occasionally you get these girls who are like, you're going to be the sexy one. And they are the furthest personality away from whatever it is the production company wants to make them but they're forced to do the role and it's so awkward to watch and it's the opposite of sexy. And then I'm watching Taylor Swift and I'm like, this is exactly yeah. what I'm witnessing right now. It's like, it's like, uh, it's like watching Lance Bass from NSYNC not look gay as fuck doing whatever he does. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, dude, you're gay. <laughs> you you don't like women. So can you not fuck with women in this vi- video? But you kind of have to because you're in a boy you, band. Because you're in a boy and, band, and that's the and way back it's going to be. You know, there's just, you weren't allowed to be gay. So, yeah. um, you know, you look gay as shit with that girl. Yeah. And that's what Taylor Swift looks just, like just doing awkward. whatever she does. Awkward. Just, it's just not, I'm just, I don't feel, I don't, I, Taylor, I just Taylor don't, Swift, ugh. you know, you know who Taylor Swift uh, seems like to me? Taylor Swift is almost like the girl who's unattractive as hell for her entire life until she hits her 20s. And then she's suddenly like a light switch goes on and she's a 46 out of 10. And she has no idea how to manage how life has changed. She went to having to like bust her ass to get everyone to like her to not having to fucking try anymore. 
And because you're because you get so much more attractive, you're expected to be able to know how to handle yourself differently in social situations and like and interact with people on a different level. It's just kind of the way, you know, things work out that way. That's that's that it's who I feel, feel Taylor Swift is. She's like this unassuming kind of quiet girl that might have had a you know a bit of a bitch side to her at one point but not anything blown out and then she got super famous and she's had to change her her look and her style to keep with the times and everything and all of it looks awkward as fuck and it kills me to listen to it yeah taylor swift reminds me uh, the the kind of stink that i get from taylor is like she buys houses near all of her boyfriends uh, oh she's crazy too she's crazy too but 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 uh she reminds me of like you ever see, and I don't I actually don't even find like she's not an unattractive woman by any means. No, of course not. But no. but she's not like you know she's not a Beyonce or like you know like a queen. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like no. she's not she's not that's this not, like that's not thing her personality. Of beauty. No, it's not no. her personality. So she so she reminds me of like if you're if if I'm say I'm at the mall and I'm leaving the mall and uh, it's nice summer day. So you know the girls the women are not wearing a whole lot. It's hot out there and just looking for a reason to wear next to nothing. God, just God bless fucking summertime. And I go outside, and mm. there is there's a Yoga girl pants, out there. Thank God they're and fashionable. She's, and she's looking. She she looks good. Yeah. You know, it's a hot summer day. She looks good. Then she pulls out a cigarette. Oh, uh, and I'm what? like, uh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it's- I feel about Taylor <laughs> Swift. It's like, it's like you know what. <laughs> You wouldn't look so bad if everything else didn't stink like fucking cigarette smoke. <laughs> like you like you wow. know what I mean? Like that's the kind of that's the kind of nasty shit that I got uh, the taste yeah, in my mouth where it's yeah. like, you know, you'd be if you just didn't smoke. Yeah. Now in fairness, I also really like Post Malone and he basically sounds like somebody who's who's had six or seven strokes and just went out and tried to sing an album. So I mean I get I get why people would listen to Taylor Swift. I get why people wouldn't like, you know, other people that I enjoy listening to. Like, uh, I think Gabs was saying Post Malone or like Drake. She's not a big Drake fan. Uh, like, I get that 100%. Uh, because I also kind of feel that way about Drake. Drake is not gangster at all. Z- zero. J- Drake, Drake, is, Drake is, is, is one of those super white black guys. And there's nothing he will ever be able to do or say to change that about his persona. He can't do it. He's going to spend his entire career trying to convince people that he is, you know, a 50 cent or... I don't think he's trying to be Jay-Z that. Come on. He's got gun burns. Have you listened have you to him? Drake to trying to do, like, shit? high fives and everything yes, at basketball games? Yes, I've listened games? to it more than you have. Of course, and you sakes. should know that he plays it up like he's fucking... I don't think so. He plays it up. I don't think so. He plays it up. I not No hate. I mean, I like Drake music a lot. I like Drake's shit. Quite a bit. I think he does a good job. But yeah, yeah, I kind of feel similar about Drake that I do to Taylor Swift, where I feel like he's he's in a bit of an environment that he doesn't necessarily like, fit in. Like he's almost there, uh, but but not, <laughs> not but not quite. That's I mean that's why there's memes about Drake. Like Drake, the 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 kind of insert N word here that would you know. He's soft, man. He's, he's soft. soft. He's, he's soft. He's soft. He's soft. <laughs> yeah, he's soft, bro. <laughs> he's soft. <laughs> he he try he tries hard he tries hard to not look soft, but he also doesn't try hard to look hard. Like yeah. he just he, he's he, he doesn't go he doesn't he's not the gangster <laughs> type. He's just he's just like yo I'm not that soft either. Come on I'm Drake I'm Drizzy. <laughs> Bro you were on Degrassi get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, he's fired. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before this podcast goes back to our old podcast length, uh, that's going to be it for Technical Alpha this week. Hopefully, that was an enjoyable one for you guys. Uh, as always, shout outs to our Patreon producers. I don't know if this list is updated. Uh, like I say, every single week. Uh, let's see here. I'll, I'll use the one on the website. <laughs> no, I think that. What? No, I, again, just like before, somebody's getting an extra shout out. But again, I don't care because. Pretty much everyone here has given us like seven to nine hundred dollars of their lives. I don't really care. You're getting an extra shout out. Everybody gets all the shout outs. Oprah Winfrey, Jetrix, Postal Panda, Chico, Derek P, Naley, Adam B, Jamaican J, Jorbonk, Toad of Steel, and Matthew M. Bless you all. And then whoever the extra guy was in there, your name's up there. You got it one way or another. 
But thank you guys so much for stopping by. Head on over to technicalalpha.audio uh, if you want to uh, listen to old podcasts. If you're not into iTunes or or the RSS feed, if you want to just go back, you're you know checking this out on YouTube or something. You want to see some some older stuff or download it to to listen to it later. That's a good place to get it. Also, head on over to patreon.com slash technical alpha if you're feeling like uh becoming part of the community there to help us financially keep this this boat afloat so to speak and out of dangerous waters uh and yeah other than that we will be back next week same bat time same bat channel and until then do us all a favor and have a good one peace bye